All right, here we go. Okay, we got nothing. All right, we're at 13 pulls right now. I skipped Boot Hill for this. Please, Firefly. I don't want to lose the 50. <laughs> All right, I can skip the rest. All right, I'm kind of scared. What if I don't get it? That would, oh my God. For 2.3, come on. Please, Firefly. I'm like your biggest fan. Okay. Hey, we got Gallagher. I'm kind of stressed. <laughs> Nothing. Come on. Come on, girl. Come on, come on. That was 40 pulls, right? All right, 50 pulls now. It would be nice to have some to pull on the light cone. Just saying. Another sway. 60 pulls. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Please. Please. How do you think I feel? <laughs> okay. I'm scared. <laughs> come on. Silver Wolf, can you tell your fellow Stellaron Hunter to come home, please? Uh, uh, that's two. Three. Ooh, okay. Okay. Oh. Five. Six. Seven. Come on. Please, please, please. Gallagher, ah, uh, the jump scare. She's here. She's here. Oh, fuck. <laughs> you son of a bitch. Now it's just funny. <laughs> oh, you bastard. Well, chat, we press on because even if we didn't get Firefly right away, we still got a crazy ass update coming up and so you know what i'm i'm down with that well i actually do want to try to i want to check her out use technique to leap into the air and move about freely they added jumping in this game oh it's a plunge attack firefly can use her technique to leap into the air and move about freely that's pretty insane to attack multiple enemies Wait a minute. Firefly type four. Activate. Oh, okay. I thought she was like Acheron where she kills them automatically. Transform. Let's kill this dinosaur right here. Firefly type four. Activate. Wait, she's already in, um, in Sam form. Let's see what it looks like to do the single target attack. Wow, that's a lot of HP loss. Look at that. Pride. Ulti now. Let's see how it looks. Like fireflies to a flame, life begets death. That's the line from the trailer. Here we go. I will fight for myself until everything burns to ashes. Oh, she just transforms. Are we? Are we blast? Live to fight. Fight to live. I need more stellar jades. <laughs> shake it off. Shake it off. You, uh, you know, what's another 50-50? Now that's six times I've lost a 50-50. This game does not want to give me characters. So we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna press on and continue the story, all right? Well, since I can't run around as Firefly, I have to use the next best thing, which is run around as Acheron. No, nothing wake suspicious. Up. Wake up! Hey, wake up! But we've seen this before. Are we still in a dream? Are you okay? Can you hear me? I didn't hear a peep from your room, and it really freaked me out. Am I dreaming? Whoa, this conversation is such deja vu. Stop making a big fuss. This is exactly what I said earlier. Whoa! This conversation is such deja vu. What are you talking about? Are you still half asleep or something? The Order's dream is over. I don't trust it! Especially not coming from- especially coming from you, March. <sighs> Even though it's been a day, I still break into a sweat when I think about it. 
Our trailblazing expedition almost ended in Panacone. Oh. I'm so jealous that you got a good night's sleep. I was traumatized and too scared to even close my eyes. I thought if I fell asleep, I'd never wake up again. You should have slept in my room then. And it's not because I'm like simping for March. Like, I say that in the most caring sibling tone possible. <laughs> like, kind of like you're saying out because you care, but you're also kind of annoyed. <laughs> What happened to the Celeron? Where are the others? You have dark circles under your eyes. I... I have to be mean to March. A natural beauty like me never has dark circles. <laughs> that's Cap. The Celeron was sealed while you were sleeping. The ordinary people in Penacony have no idea what happened. They just feel like something's missing from their memories. The family's official statement was like... The Charmony Festival was attacked by an unidentified Stellaron and came to a halt. After all, they can't just reveal the truth about the Order. So it's still being covered up. Also, her recapping the story like this... ...is kinda lazy. This is borderline Paimon. <laughs> now, all the major lineages, except for the Oak family, are dealing with the aftermath. The family has invited the crew to the Radiant Feldspar as witnesses for an important meeting. I heard this before, too. Everyone's waiting for you, so <coughs> hurry up and pack. We're leaving as soon as you're ready. All right. But where's Firefly? <sighs> After all this craziness, nothing is better than staying safe in reality. I'm like on full alert. Trying to see if we're still in the dream. So, what is this Radiant Felspar? It's a massive airship! And it's awesome! I heard it's never shown to the public. Only VIP guests of the family get to board it and enjoy the breathtaking views of Penacony. The Iris family sent us a bunch of souvenirs. Fruit baskets, plus this fancy button model. After you're back on your feet, you can enjoy them all. We are pretty much celebrities Buddy on the model. planet of festivities now. Aren't I heard, I heard that too, <laughs> back when we were still in the dream. Tell me more about the current state of Penacone. The Stellaron was sealed while you were sleeping. The ordinary people in Penacone have no idea what happened. They just feel like something's missing from their memories. <laughs> okay, I don't like that storytelling element. Why don't we sh That's such a huge deal. Why don't you show that? Like. I'm pretty sure Welt did that. I think it'd be really cool to see that. The family's official statement was like, The Charmony Festival was attacked by an unidentified Stellaron and came to a halt. After all, they can't just reveal the truth about the Order. Now, all the major lineages, except for the... Okay, yeah, she said that already. What happened to you and Anna's dream? Why the sudden interest in that? Why not? Well, I was dragged into the sweet dream. I felt a cold tentacle diving into my memories. Tentacle. But something else was there. So the tentacle suddenly disappeared. And then... I dreamed about stuffing my face with delicious food and going on a shopping spree. Sunday didn't seriously believe that was the life I wanted, right? Ugh, breaking free from that cheesy illusion was just a piece of cake. Oh. Well, good on you, March. Let's go meet up with the others. Yeah, let's go. We've got some time before we board the ship, so let's catch up with everyone at Dream Jolt Hostelry. There she is! I love... I mean, I'm smitten by her. I think they did a really good job building her character, making her very appealing, very sympathetic. Some of it very heavy-handed, I know that there's a lot of people who think maybe it's a little bit overdone. I don't give a shit. I'm a big fan. I love Firefly. I love I love the role that she plays in the story. And I really, really hope. Oh, no, this this might be foreshadowing. But I really, really hope that her relevance to the story doesn't end in Penacone. I hope that she becomes a little bit more of a reoccurring character. She doesn't have to join the Astral Express. 
I mean, I wouldn't say no. We could use more people on the train, but st you know, still, I do want to see her in action. Yeah. How extravagant! Just like Epsilon. How was it? Did it live up to your dreamscape expectations? You already asked that when we first got here. Yeah, and you said no back then. But after all this madness, I'd say you've grown fond of it. <laughs> and she has a little bit of a smile. I like the design of her eyes. They really capture her expression. Like, again, kind of like a mix of innocence, but also like she's seen horrors <laughs> in the universe. Kind of a deal. But just a heads up, you're still on the Bloodhound family's wanted list, so keep a low profile. What is the family going to do to her? She's literally a walking weapon. <laughs> like they could contain her. And this time, it's Firefly in the picture, not Sam. That's got to be a whole new experience for you, right? Indeed. In Kafka's words, that's also a missing part of my life. Still, it'd be quite inconvenient if I can't move freely. Could you help me out, Silverwolf? Mm. I knew you'd say that. Don't worry. I've hacked all the systems and left no trace. Ah, convenient. Don't do anything that may draw attention and don't talk with guards. They might recognize you. Keep these two points in mind and you can go wherever you want unbothered. Like meeting up with me again, yeah? And joining my party after I pull you. <laughs> Thank you. No problem, Miss Samuel. <laughs> I love this fake name. Now that we're done here in Penacony, what will you do in your free time? I hear the Genius Society is here. How about we go stir up some excitement? Well, you know, my script isn't over yet. That's what I was going to say. I think feel like she has more to do. I didn't bring you back to hear an answer like that. Silverwolf brought her back? Like in the same way that Argenti brought back, uh, Aventurine? <laughs> Don't worry. The script says that I'll experience three deaths, but also receive an unforgettable reward on the planet of festivities. How will I know if I don't try? All possibilities exist until the outcome actually happens, right? You may not realize it, but you have a bad habit. Whenever you seem to be asking a question, you've already made up your mind, and no words will dissuade you. <laughs> Anyway, Kafka asked me to pass on this message. If you see anything fabulous in Penacony, get one for me too. Just swipe my card, you know the pin. <laughs> Damn. She didn't specify anything, but I guess she means a dress, coat, sunglasses, or something else. You know better about fashion than I do. Really? First of all, is this a hint to skins? Dress, coat, sunglasses? Sure. I'll keep an eye out. There's tons of options at OT Mall. <gasps> Do you think she'll like trinkets? Like, uh, hair accessories or brooches? Those sound more like something for young girls. Maybe you should keep them for yourself. <laughs> I get, she's a soldier, and like for, for Silverwolf to say that Firefly might know more about fashion, that's very interesting. I mean, I do like the dress that she has. Oh, by the way, Blade didn't explicitly say it, but I think he was trying to say something like, Temptation will show up again in Panacone. <laughs> He's always so subtle with his words. Temptation. Am I the temptation? Huh? 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 Got it. He was just worried about me. Relax, Silverwolf. You know me. I won't do anything crazy. I just want to wander around and see more of the world for myself. Oh, I want to buy some oat cake rolls. I've had a cake roll every day since I arrived in Penacony, from the first day to the last. 
She seems awfully casual considering everything that's happened. But today, I'll buy two and give you one. And if you don't like them, I'll enjoy double the pleasure. Or I can bring one to Kafka, as she never refuses. Or maybe I'll give it to Blade. He'll appreciate it. You just want to buy one for me. Just admit it. Admit it, Firefly. That's not written in the script, right? But as you see, I have added new footnotes to my destiny. Gosh, she's so cute. I'm switching to Topaz? <gasps> At the Radiant oh, welcome, Feldspar. Director Topaz. The family ambassadors are still inside making preparations, but the big boss hasn't arrived yet. It'll be a while before the conference starts, I'm afraid. Huh, quite a spectacle. The family really knows how to make things look impressive. She's such a hottie, too. Goddamn. I thought they would choose a more formal and low-key location for the conference. I didn't expect them to go with a luxury airship. About this, Director. I've asked around. This airship, named uh, the Radiant Feldspar, belongs to the Alfalfa family. Is this ship outside of the dream? I just want to make sure. This conference between the IPC and the family will have a direct impact on Penacone's future. Such an important event should have been held at it. <sighs> well, somewhere secretive in the moment of Morning Dew. The atmosphere here... It doesn't feel serious enough. It looks like a resort. Hmm. Like a cruise ship, actually. If I'm right, this conference is probably just a prelude. Whoever organized it wants to assess the IPC stance beforehand. Wait. This background, where they're flying. This is, these are cities. Are we in the dream or not? <laughs> this influential figure either has their own ambitions and wants to reach a preliminary agreement, or... They plan to put pressure on us to make us back off. I don't know. Can you make the IPC back off? I feel like you can't. Oh, your mind is always so sharp, Director Topaz. And when the big boss arrives, please remind her to be cautious and watch out for any traps. Traps from who, huh? From the IPC? <laughs> Thank you for the reminder, but I don't think that will be necessary. When she's at the table, it's the others who need to be cautious. We're talking about Jade, right? Just tell everyone on our team to stay focused on their tasks and not worry about the negotiations. Oh, got it. I'll do it right away. Oh, and uh, one more thing. Don't call Miss Jade Big Boss in front of her, or there will be serious consequences. I mean, really serious. He's gonna get taken out back, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, got it. <laughs> Thank you for the reminder, Director. She's cute. She's cute. Alright, I get to walk around as Topaz. I don't want to take in the scenery. Wow. Yeah, we are totally in the dream. There's no way this, this exists in real life. When, when we're talking about an airship in a dream, I feel like that kind of takes out the, the majesty of it, you know? It's like, it's not that impressive if it's just a dream ship. Wow, this might actually be longer than I expected. I was expecting this to be like, just like an epilogue, but this might actually be a full patch. I better take this seriously then. None of the important figures have arrived yet. Huh. Looks like the conference won't be starting for a while. Such a bustling place. I think I'll take a little walk around. Kill time while waiting for the meeting. Okay. All right, let's... All uh, right, here. The family's guard. Oh, you got little gifts. Wait. Those are the buttons. So many buttons. How many centuries would it take to press them all? Oh. This was Sparkle ended up... Didn't expect those pooches to actually recycle them all. Huh? What are these? <clears throat> For your safety, please stay away from those objects. <laughs> <laughs> I almost got busted there, Sparkle. For my safety? 
Are these buttons something dangerous? Not exactly. Lately, there's been a prankster in the sweet dream who's been handing out strange button devices to anyone he meets. According to those involved, he said something like, just press this button and all of Panacone will explode. What do the buttons do? Luckily, no one believed him. Still, the Bloodhound family collected these buttons just to be on the safe side. Hasn't anyone actually tried pressing it? What will happen if you press it? Hasn't anyone actually tried? Well, perhaps you don't know much about Panacone? All the guests here have one thing in common. They're terrified of death. Anyway, the family will deal with these things. Please kindly keep your distance. You're saying that she actually went around and collected them? We still don't really know what the buttons were for. Was it a red herring? Or did they actually have... Are they still uh, going to play a role like coming up now? You can have some, Numbi. Oh, are you hungry, Numbi? Hmm, food in the dream. Uh, shouldn't taste bad, right? Toss the oat cake roll to Numbi. Numbi! Yes! Did Numbi like it? <laughs> Sounds like it. Oh, maybe not. After eating the oat cake rolls, Numbi seems a bit uncomfortable. Ooh. Oops, not to your liking, huh? <laughs> oh, sorry. I'll treat you to a nice meal once we get back to reality. The family's attendant. Greetings, madame. What can I do for you? Hello. Could you tell me more about the Radiant Feldsvar? I assume you are the ambassador of the IPC Strategic Investment Department. It's my honor to assist you. The Radiant Feldsvar is owned by Mr. Odie Alfalfa, head of the Alfalfa family. Mr. Alfalfa invested a significant amount in building this luxurious airship an Ember era ago, and it has been sailing across the 12 hours of the dreamscape ever since. Invested a significant amount in building an airship, but in a dream. I, that's not that impressive. <laughs> hey. Oh, so it's owned by old OD himself. No wonder the ship is so lavishly decorated. Indeed, Mr. Alfalfa has impeccable taste. Only the most prestigious guests are invited by the Alfalfa family to board this airship. Nice. Please allow me to continue my introduction. The Radiant Felspar had been cruising over the Sea of Dreams in Penacone for an entire Ember era. But its voyage was temporarily halted due to the recent reverberation. Reverberation? <laughs> Such a formal way of putting it. You're really downplaying the whole thing. <laughs> the whole Stellaron incident? Uh, <laughs> I apologize. Please continue. <clears throat> Following the previous reverberation in the sweet dream, the Radiant Felspar had to suspend its voyage temporarily. Thankfully, the factors that disrupted the dreamscape have been resolved. However, due to, well, certain special reasons, the Charmony Festival originally scheduled at the Panacone Grand Theater had to be temporarily postponed. I mean, I, I would cancel it at this point. They're actually, like, still thinking about actually doing the Charmony Festival. Especially think, considering, like, what the festival actually is. <laughs> so, Mr. Alfalfa suggested relocating the Charmony Festival to the Radiant Felspar, taking this opportunity to announce the resumption of the airship's voyage. Ah, oh, well, that would meet the family's needs and also create momentum for Mr. Alfalfa himself. Quite fitting for a legendary tycoon like him. Yeah, it makes it far even more of a privileged event. Thank you for explaining matters to me. Goodbye. <laughs> Hello? Oh, phone call. The talent Motivation Department? Again? Internal review? Will it ever end? <laughs> Look how disappointed she is. Uh, I'm working on a major project. I don't have time to squabble with you guys. I... 
the way I handled the Urillo case was approved by senior management, and all of the project logs and calls are complete. Can't you check on them yourselves? Oh, she's mad. I just don't understand. Why are you so fixated on this minor case and constantly escalating it? I... Seriously, what's your purpose? Oh, maybe she has some enemies within IPC. Sounds exhausting. Why not just hang up? Oh, big boss is here. But don't say that in front of her. In my opinion, you handled that project quite well. A little ball of ice in exchange for the Astral Express's good favor. That's not a bad deal for the department. It's been a while, little Yelena. I've been looking forward to working with you. I never imagined this day would come so soon. Is there trouble? Even she's smitten. Tell me anything. Just like old times. Ah, it's been a while, Madam Jade. I'm honored to have the opportunity to work with you. What an introduction! Holy crap! <laughs> I'm the trotter. <laughs> yes, we are all the trotter. But actually, no, I'm... I mean, Topaz, like... Her eyes, like, got all big when she, when she walked in. Opportunity to work with your okay, so I I is I was wondering like how often they interacted. I guess not all that often. You're still so formal, aren't you? Forget about the hierarchy and treat me as your equal. No need for unnecessary titles like madam. Ooh. Yes, madam. <laughs> but also she's kinda like Black Swan, where I'm like, hmm, can we trust her? She seems like, sounds very pleasant and nice, but then, uh, like, ultimately, she's, like, really scheming and and could be an actual threat underneath. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it might take some time to get used to that. After all, you are a senior. Well, now that we're both members of the Ten Stone Hearts, I need you to be at your best. Especially since the upcoming negotiations leave no room for error. As sharp as you are, I'm sure you've figured out the true purpose of this conference, right? I believe old Oti has taken it upon himself to test our limits before the official negotiations between the IPC and Panacone. Hmm. I feel like you guys should talk about this in like a, a different room or something. That's true, and it works in our favor. Do you know why? If we can reach some sort of agreement with old Oti beforehand, and gauge our opponent's boundaries, our future negotiations will go much more smoothly. That's the obvious benefit. Exactly. And the hidden benefit is that, as the head of the Alfalfa family, his action suggests that the five lineages might not be as united as the Odes of Harmony would suggest. Mm, mm. Divide and conquer. As long as the influence of Harmony hasn't completely permeated their core, personal desires will always have their way. Thankfully, influential figures in Penacone haven't entirely suppressed their own desires. Mm -hmm. It's similar to the power struggles within the IPC. The supposed all-for-one philosophy shared by the five lineages it's just a slogan now that the Dream Master has gone. Divide and conquer. I mean, I don't really care for Penacone. <laughs> at, at this point, considering everything that's been shooken up, I just care about the, the characters like Robin. And I guess Sunday, wherever the, f the f he is. <laughs> After the downfall of the Oak family, old Oti's faction became the dominant force in Penacone. Even if we consider only the succession order, he's the longest serving and most senior among all the family heads. Yes, that's exactly why we need to handle the conference following an agreed upon strategy. It's like playing a game of chess, where every move needs to be carefully thought out. Damn. I mean, this this part seems all political, but I'm definitely I'm definitely curious, like how this is all going to play out. And if it's going to play out peacefully, too. You know, shake things up a little bit with some chaos. Absolutely. The three steps of negotiation. Listen, test, and strike. 
That's what you taught me. That's their... That's, uh... That's their MO right there. Pretty clear. Although, you seem to have changed the order in the Yarilo case. <laughs> that was based on my personal experience. Damn, they're never gonna let her live it down. I, I apologize for interrupting your conversation, but the family head is ready to meet the ambassadors from the Strategic Investment Department. Look at her outfit. Actually, this split of color right here reminds me of Serval. And then she gets this big, big ass hat. Got the one glove thing going. There's, there's always asymmetry with these outfits. You know who's the most symmetrical? Firefly. <laughs> but like for her, like, you know, if you, you split it right down the middle, everything's different from left to right. Same thing for her. I feel like that's uh, a Hoyoverse like standard or something. Time to get to work. Let's prepare ourselves and meet that esteemed supporting actor. Remember, our goal is to create an opportunity for the IPC to enter Penacony. Aventurine has already made a small opening, and you and I, we're going to tear it wide open. Ooh, I'm gonna tear open Penacony's ass. <laughs> it, hold on, so actually, while this is all going on, is, is, Aventurine, is Aventurine still in his hotel room being held at gunpoint <laughs> by Boot Hill? I'm hoping that Boot Hill still plays a big role. Like, he definitely hasn't been fully realized. Let's just, let's press on. I have a feeling this is gonna actually be a much longer patch than I realize. I hope it's long, actually, at this point, because there's a lot of interesting things that have to play out. <laughs> Welcome aboard my ship, the Radiant... This is Wario-looking ass. Smart and charming ladies. Oh, okay. He reminds me of that one Lalafell on in Costa del Sol in Final Fantasy XIV. Kind of like a rich guy with glasses who's just sort of like aloof. Please have a seat. Let's have a pleasant conversation. These ears though. Does anyone in in Honkai Star have elf ears? Hold on, let's take a closer look at this girl right here. Hello, mama. <laughs> Welcome aboard, my dear ladies. Forgive me for any lack of attentiveness that might have led to a lengthy wait outside. Hmm. I take cash. No problem at all, Mr. Alfalfa. It's my honor to meet you in person. You may not be aware, but the book Odi Alfalfa, the biography, is a must-read for all Strategic Investment Department employees. <laughs> yeah, sure it is. After all... To many, you are the legendary figure who single-handedly built the Penacony economy. This is the expression in anime when people are lying through their teeth or being deceiving. <laughs> I expected no less from the ten stone hearts from the strategic investment department. You're definitely skilled in the art of conversation. I always enjoy talking to smart people because we don't have to beat around the bush. We can just get straight to the point instead. Cool. Since I invited kind of calling them out right here. see ambassadors on board, I'm sure you've figured out the topic I'd like to discuss, yes? The future of Penacony, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, she has a light purple lipstick. <laughs> Precisely. Those few words represent a terribly complicated situation indeed. Let's take that golden-haired guy who's not showing up, for example. He put in great effort and almost got himself killed. But what was it all for? Mmm, he's using Adventurine's incident as a bargaining chip. Get some leverage on the IPC. Wasn't it eventually to create an opportunity for you IPC to regain control of the precious Astana? <laughs> oh, he's playing hardball! Hmm. I wonder what they're gonna say. The wisdom and experience you've accumulated over ten Amber Eras are truly impressive. Ah, uh, Jade starts off with a compliment. Let's assume your assumptions are correct, Mr. Alfalfa. How would you respond to the IPC's actions? I appreciate your composure, Miss Jade. You must have witnessed much in your worldly experiences. 
This is a tense conversation, but it doesn't sound like it. <laughs> They're going in already. However, perhaps you don't know much about Penacony. <laughs> Old Oti won't sit idly by when faced with a greedy wolf. The call out. Oh, oh. She's like, uh oh, things aren't going well. Please go ahead. I'm all ears. <laughs> Topaz doesn't know what to say, so she's looking over to Jade to be like, oh shit, dude, he's he's not to be trifled with, basically. <laughs> then I'll be straightforward. I requested this meeting before the official conference to dissuade the strategic investment department from trying to lay a finger on Penacony. Yeah, he's telling he's telling the to fucking back off. If you back off now, right here. you can make a smooth exit and prevent the IPC from losing face during more important negotiations. That helped her. She's getting serious now. One of our P45 executives was attacked and nearly killed in the dreamscape. The IPC can't simply ignore this incident. Moreover, considering the turbulence during the Charmony Festival, Panacone's credibility has taken a hit in the public's eyes. <laughs> Surface level doesn't seem like a very interesting uh, uh, conversation, but man! Okay, Topaz claps back, let's see. Despite your determined attitude, the issues plaguing Panacone are real, are they not? With a slight smile. You use the term real, Miss Topaz, but let's not forget that this is the realm of dreams. If you want to succeed here, you need ambition and unconventional thinking. All right, dwarf. Curious about how I plan to respond to the IPC? Well, I don't mind sharing. Got a blink. My actions will help Panacone take a significant step forward by self-listing and going public. Like tr treating Panacone as a whole, like a like a corporation. Interesting. Going public. If I'm not mistaken, you want to bypass the IPC and go public on a universal scale. Oh, she's just like, tisk tisk, know your place, dwarf. Precisely. Instead of watching the IPC gnaw away at Panacone, I'd prefer to open the doors of the sweet dream to the entire universe. Starting today, anyone in the cosmos can become a shareholder of the land of the dreams. This is the path of harmony I'll choose. <laughs> That's not a bad strat, considering all the chaos. This reform should have been implemented earlier, but unfortunately, the Oak family were a bunch of blockheads blinded by order. <laughs> Their level of intellectual flexibility doesn't even come close to an old fellow like me. Thanks to the little um, reverberation earlier, the biggest obstacle between me and my reforms has been eliminated. <laughs> oh, cunning! This fool, the, with the with the way that the, the actor is portraying him, he's like a jolly old man, like Santa Claus. But this guy, he's he's a tycoon. He's ready. He's ready to seize control. The Alfalfa family will publicize the financial results of Sweet Dream Paradise so that the entire universe can see that despite the catastrophe, Penacone still holds immense potential and opportunities and that the family remains confident in its future. Hmm. Sorry, I think Topaz giving this kind of a pouty face is very adorable. <laughs> Meanwhile, her her hat kind of it it shrouds her uh, her emotion. St strategic crisis and opportunity are two sides of the same coin. 
So, you've been waiting for the right moment for Panacone to regain the spotlight. And if Panacone should seize this opportunity to overcome adversity, even if the IPC tries to intervene, every move we make will be scrutinized by trillions of people. Oh, leverage. <laughs> now I'm convinced that you've indeed familiarized yourself with my biography, Miss Jade. So, about your next move. Please, consider it carefully. Yeah. That's a threat. Indeed. We need some time to digest such a wealth of information. What? Jade, this is it? I thought you were here to play ball! Damn. I feel like she's on the ropes right now. I suggest we conclude the first half of our conference, Mr. Alfalfa. Please allow Topaz and me to confer privately for a few moments, and to respond on behalf of the IPC later. <laughs> of course. Take your time, dear ladies. She still looks pretty confident. All right, back the to Trevor. The family had a meeting with the IPC. Ah, <sighs> oh, Welt, I haven't forgiven you yet. You ruined my fifty-fifty. I mean, you still like him though. I got this information from a message sent by that IPC ambassador. He said it was to return the favor. It's not hard to imagine. Panacone today is pretty much like the frontier prison it once was, with. External forces casting greedy eyes and the undercurrent of order lurking within. Instead of falling into a situation where they are plagued by both external and internal threats, Panacone would rather take a step back and invite the IPC to negotiate at the table. Ostensibly to cooperate, but in reality, to secure more opportunities for their own survival. Mm. Astute observation there, Welt. Well, no wonder they sought the mediation from the Astral Express. In your opinion, who should we stand behind? Remain neutral. We're like the Avengers. I don't think the followers of the Harmony are completely innocent victims in all of this. For reasons unknown, they have a strong desire to smooth things over, which leads to speculation about their motives. If either the family or IPC were to assume full control of Panacone, it would return to its previous illusory dream of hedonism, and the efforts of those previous nameless would once again go to waste. Oh, he doesn't like either. But I guess if you had to sum it up, what were the previous nameless trying to accomplish? Weren't they just trying to... I don't know. Just overthrow the powers that be there you are did you rest well i didn't disturb you since you were in a deep sleep why are you man if leaving me to sleep now i missed out on all this shit we we fought hard to freaking get them out of the the dream i feel like i should be a part of everything that comes after that feels like i had a really long dream Where's, where's Himiko? Please continue the topic. This is kind of random. Where's Himiko? Actually, I'm not, I'm not really caring where Himiko is. Please continue the topic. Yeah, just go on. Hmm. After Anna's dream was shattered, the family branch from the Montour system soon arrived and swiftly took control of the situation. Most members of the Oak family fell unconscious, but fortunately, their lives were not in danger. <sighs> the mastermind behind the plans was confirmed to be Gopher Wood, the previous Dream Master. But by the time we arrived, he was Rose. dead already. And what about Sunday? He'll face a trial. As Did for they, further they catch details, him? Uh, the family would rather not disclose them. I feel like he's at large still. Based on, like, the hidden scene with Robin. Ultimately, the public perceived the incident as an attack by evil forces targeting the Charmony Festival. They believe the family failed to safeguard the sweet dream, significantly eroding their credibility in the process. 
while quite different from the truth, this appears to be the outcome with the least impact. Yep. After all, you don't know who's awake and who's pretending to be asleep. Well, they'll open their eyes in the face of danger. Once the danger subsides, they'll embrace the sweet dream again. Siobhan, hey, she's coming back to the main story. Nice. Here's a toast with three glasses of glory of the trailblaze to all of you. Is that one of the drinks I helped make? Hello again. Yeah, it's good to see you all again. Although we might be saying goodbye again after this reunion. What? Why? When will the Astral Express leave Pentagoni? <laughs> well, the patch is called Farewell Pentagoni. <laughs> we'll stay a bit longer, but not too long. So, this is our final meeting then? If this is a farewell, then it seems to be missing something. Yeah. Order up, gang. We're gonna be drinking our sorrows away. Music? Atmosphere? Ah, maybe a special drink to honor those who are not here. Yeah. Mm, let's see. The mixed drink should be solemn, dignified, and unique. As we'll use it to pay respect to those fallen heroes. To the nameless resting in peace. And to Gallagher. Is Gallagher actually dead? Damn. Rest in peace. This trailblazing expedition has been thrilling and memorable. Hopefully we've all gained insights about ideals, paranoia, clarity, and dreams from the experiences we've had. What will happen to Sunday and Robin? One bird longs for the earth and the other longs for the sky. Even if Robin had to stop her brother with her own hands, she won't give up on him. Yeah, that's true. However, facing punishment from the Harmony is inevitable. He will face a trial. As for further details, the family would rather not disclose them. When did the Order infiltrate Pen uh, Did the IPC make any move? Uh, Venturine's efforts finally earned the IPC a seat at the table. As a result, really? a more senior representative arrived in Penaconi and initiated negotiations with the family. Avengers earned a seat. For all intents and purposes, was kind of like a terrorist. <laughs> he caused a lot of damage. That's That earned him a seat. As far as the Astral Express is concerned, the IPC will make for an invaluable ally during the negotiations to prevent Penaconi returning to its former ways. What happened to you and Anna's dream? Well, it was somewhat surprising. In that dream, I returned to my home world and reunited with my long lost friends. And for some reason, Acheron resurfaced in my mind. When I realized that her conclusion was not preserved in memories, I became aware of the bitter truth. Ooh. It's the conclusion of a journey can often be sorrowful. All we can do is to try to make sure it ends on a happy note. And the happy note being that Firefly joins the Astral Express. Yes, I agree, Welt. All right, what do you, Don Hung, It's say? rare for all passengers to leave the Express together during a trailblazing expedition. But for Penacony, it seems most appropriate. But what about the Express? Given the conductor's presence, there's no need to worry about it. However, it's crucial that we soon return to inform Pom Pom about uh, the Nameless. That's right. We never did that because we were in a dream. What happened to you in Anna's dream? Oh, interesting. I'm curious. Yeah. What would Don Hung dream, Don Hung dream about? In my dream. The express stopped at many places, and passengers came and went. However, the five of us were always present, and the journey seemed never ending. Oh, that's what he wants. Oh, that kind of just shows a little bit about like how he cares about his now companions. This is what he wants. He wants the journey to never end. <sighs> Perhaps this could be a oh, deep-seated well, hey. desire inside me. All right, well, they confirm it here. And uh, upon realizing this, 
I, uh, I knew it wasn't real. Oh, that's such a downer. It could be real. We don't know how long they're going to support Honkai Star Rail. For many years, Hon <laughs> Donon. Is the order incident in Pentagon unique case? Uh, he lived a long time. This actually might be uh, an interesting question. <sighs> no related records exist in the databank. But I have a theory. The hidden dangers of the order have always been within the harmony. And this issue existed within the family from the very beginning. However, now that more powers in the universe are aware of this secret, the situation in the cosmos uh, will become more complicated. That's all like for now. Like I said, we'll go and see. Once we've packed everything, we should head to our next destination. Mm hmm. When I think about it right now, I'm not I'm not that eager to leave Panacone. I think we've done I think we definitely hit a conclusion, especially after the last patch. But I like this place. This was this was a, a really solid story arc and planet to visit. Siobhan, what do you got? Ready to mix your drink? So what happened to Gallagher? I'm not sure. I haven't seen him since our last meeting at the lounge. Come to think of it, he always did come and go quietly. Hmm. It was even real. We used to discuss everything here. But every time he'd leave, I'd realize that I didn't know him at all. Such is the mystery that is Gallagher. But because he's not real. <laughs> I have a hunch. Perhaps he's already fulfilled his wishes and won't be coming back. Hmm. He he's dead. No. Oh, what a way to what a send off though. Let's mix Before the drinks. Before we start, uh, would you like to talk to your friends? We have plenty of time. I already did that. No need. Let's get All started. All right, as you wish. Huh. I think I have an idea about what drink to make. Would you like it bitter or sweet? It's up to you. Choose the flavor that suits you best at this moment. <sighs> bitter. To match the bitter sweetness of the ending of this tale. Here's Bitter Dreams, the least popular drink in this bar. Damn. It's bitter and sour. <laughs> Just like the harsh realities of life. Yep. That's why I chose it. Not a bad choice. Let's start mixing. Oh, they're actually making, I was wondering if they're gonna make me do it. All right, mini vintage glass. So adding a little bit of sourness to it as well. Bitter's dreams, very bitter, very refreshing. Death is a bitter truth, but what you did will be remembered by history. Wow. Hashtag Words deep. Words always fall short. If you want to bring closure to past events at this lounge, there's no better way than mixing a drink. Oh, is this the last we're gonna be we're gonna see of Siobhan? A lot of people were like, wow, she has a great design. Blend all your memories and emotions together and stir them well. Through the filter of time, what remains in the glass is something to savor. Well, it's done. Anaconi's done. Here's to the nameless resting in peace. And to my friend, Gallagher. Yeah, cheers. Rest in peace, Gallagher. Death is a bitter truth, but what you did will be remembered by history. We're not accepted by the outside world, so we've gathered here. And one day, our souls will return to the same place. Wow. Oh. That was also deep. Cheers. All right. And let's make out. <laughs> Just kidding. Text message. Oh, there's Himiko. Guys, let's make our way to the Radiant Velspar. I'll wrap things up soon. Let's meet at the Ath Bowl in, in the stern. Roger, catch you later. What have you been up to lately, Miss Himiko? Hey, I was about to ask the same thing. But you can't send that sticker. What? Girl. Mm, mm, mm. Be patient, you'll find out in the opening ceremony. Hey, I can't wait. Yeah, exactly, March. Hey, 
Himiko is also very cunning. I'd be interested to see how her and Welt, uh, you know, what kind of role they'll play as we go to the negotiating table, right? Oh, are you leaving? Well, then take this with you. The drink I that we made? I mixed more of this last special drink for you. <sighs> the past shouldn't be forgotten. So I hope it brings back the flavors of Panacone. Thank you. Uh, I'm sure it'll leave a lasting impression. Yeah, when we get back to the ship, well, let's whip out a, let's whip out the handle. Let's drink some. I like to, you know, loosen you up a bit and see what you have to say when you're nice and liquored up, you know? <laughs> if you happen to run into Gallagher, make sure he has a sip too. I know his tastes and he'll be thrilled. We will. We will. All right, enough with the heavy stuff. You guys have important things to take care of. So let's not dwell on things. Hi, Siobhan Purdy. Right? It is kind of bittersweet. That's why we made the bitter drink. Whether it's the Astral Express or Panacone, there's still a long journey ahead. So let's lift our spirits, guys. Yeah, you should make dr you should mix drinks on the Astral Express. That'd be pretty sick. And embark towards our tomorrows. Oh, we're switching to Jade. <sighs> Old Odie is a tricky opponent. I didn't expect him to take the risky step of going public at such a critical moment for Panacone. Ah, uh, Topaz, you have much to learn. That's probably what Jade's gonna say. Indeed. He's definitely bold. It's that kind of boldness that made him the Odie Alfalfa he is today. Still... The outcome is uncertain. Shouting loud doesn't necessarily carry any weight. What about the phone call I asked you to make, Topaz? Ah, they agreed. But it'll take some time before they arrive. Oh, did they call the Astral Express? Actually, we are a huge bargaining chip considering what our role in restoring order. Just as it should be. The sweet dew should be served after the bitter poison. As she looks at the glass. <laughs> looks like we'll be skipping the exchanging apples step this time around. <laughs> now that we're dealing with a greedy merchant, a simple apple wouldn't make a difference. Well, I guess I included myself in that remark too. <laughs> now I'm a bit curious, Topaz. Do you think Panacone is a quality asset? Hmm, yes. Despite its recent calamity, Panacone remains a top quality asset within the cosmos with a uh, good, <laughs> good credit, lucrative potential, and uh, promising prospects. Yeah, we're here to collect taxes. Well, that's obvious. But what I truly wanted to know is, this project is obviously too bland for your taste, isn't it? What are you getting at, Jade? <laughs> that's true. I wouldn't be here if it weren't for Venturine. But despite that, you trust him. You even entrusted him with a cornerstone. Something as precious as life itself to finish this gamble. Uh, are you not in the same boat, Miss Jade? Without us playing along, your Jade Stone wouldn't have made it across the border so easily, allowing you to see all desires that flow through dreams to gain a bargaining chip in negotiations. Ooh, is that the special power it has? <laughs> That's why I'm willing to stake my topaz stone to cover for you. <laughs> it's like one big elaborate game of chess. It sounds like they're flirting with each other. Um, is that, that just me? Once that kid sets his mind to something, nothing can stop him. Not even fate. <laughs> well, at least he's still alive. And that's the best outcome. <laughs> Looks like uh, we've strayed off topic, Miss Jade. Should we discuss our next steps? No need. I'll go it alone. Meanwhile, you can go greet our honored guest and wait for my message. Okay. Is that Robin? Huh. She's also here on the Radiant Felt's bar. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she has a whip! 
Of course you would have a whip. So Robin's here. Well, that's good. I wanted to see her. Greetings, Miss Robin. I didn't expect to meet you here. Hmm. I kind of did, actually. Miss Jade? Greetings. The opening ceremony for the Charmony Festival has been moved to the Radiant Feldspar, so I'm here making some preparations. Ugh, isn't that kind of insult to entry at this point? Like, hey, yo, Charmony Festival got postponed, so Miss Robin, you're gonna have to, like, plan it again, but put it on the cruise ship, all right? It's like, yeah, for, forget about your brother and forget about the whole fiasco. You gotta, this festival needs to happen. Leave this girl alone. <laughs> How about you? Have you spoken with Mr. Alfalfa? I'm actually on my way to meet him right now. Do you know him well, Miss Robin? Unfortunately, I've never met him. I've only heard a few comments from the former head of the Oak family. Sunday. <laughs> Mr. Alfalfa is respectable when it comes to business. But in other respects, I can't say the same. Yeah, due to creep. Santa Claus looking creep. Hmm. Where do you think the future of the planet of festivities is headed? Hmm, apt question. I believe the sweet dream will see its rebirth. Just like the Radiant Feldspar resumed its voyage. Is that a good thing though? I thought she would be fully on board with the dream ending. That's kind of a somber statement. It's almost like, damn, even after all of that stuff and putting Sunday on trial, it just, life goes on. Everything will just continue as it is. That's kind of sad. The Harmony needs a new direction. Only by bidding farewell to the past can we actually sail into the future. There are no permanent allies or everlasting enemies. So let's both take what we need from this deal. Ooh, what she mean by that? Is she also trying to tell Jade, hey, you know, don't be greedy? Naturally. I'm looking forward to your performance. See you at the festival. Oh, it's almost threatening. <laughs> you know, killing them with kindness. See you later, Miss Jade. All right, Mr. Santa Claus. Yeah. Mm, time to whip you into shape. <laughs> Start on second half negotiations. Thank you for your patience, Mr. Alfalfa. Let's continue our discussion. <laughs> Figured out something already, Miss Jade? Hmm. But where is Miss Topaz? Topaz has something else to take care of. You'll be seeing her later. Talks can still continue between the two of us. Ooh, she ended a statement with that. Look at this glare. Is it just me, Miss? Your tone sounds very different now. Pull out the whip. I need to set a good example for my junior. It's not a good habit to be too loose-lipped during negotiations, right? <laughs> and you finish that with a smile. Now we can speak frankly and openly. Do you believe what I said, Odie? You're not the only merchant who has seen the changes in the cosmic market over the past 10 Amber Eras. Oh, she's playing ball now. She just didn't want to do it in front of Topaz. Interesting. <laughs> now that's interesting. Yeah. Quit the bullshit, old man. Let's see. Let's see you play ball, too. He's still trying to act all jolly. Good. It's good to be straightforward. Openness and transparency are my things. So, tell me, what's your next move? Unfortunately, I'd like to speak the harsh truth before laying out my plan. <laughs> let's cut to the chase. Yes, we've been trying to get First, to that. Your plan won't work. Penacony has no way of sidestepping the IPC and going public. Ooh. Second, you can't stop the IPC from entering Penacony. We've got all the time and connections in the world to find a way in. We'll keep tearing down and rebuilding this place until the Asdana system gets used to the IPC's ways again. Oh, that's a threat. Now... I'm repeating your words exactly. If you don't want to be a laughing stock and have everyone gunning for you at the official conference, you'd better drop your little pie in the sky plan. Ooh, like she has that smirk. Oh, makes her kind of 
Yeah. She's gaining hotness points, chat. Oh, interesting. Indeed. You surely have a way with words. Now, I'm curious to know what you have up your sleeve. Mm -hmm. Mr. Alfalfa, let's not forget that the IPC controls the biggest interstellar publicity platform. More than half the news networks in the universe take their orders from us. Ooh, we control the narrative. The moment news spreads about Penacony going public, trillions of customers will immediately receive a message like this. Ooh, threat. The family's protection for Penacony has expired. Any mishaps in the dreamscape could result in permanent brain death. She wants to use propaganda to go after him? Interesting. Care to guess how many ways we have to turn alfalfa credits into worthless junk within a measly 24 system hours? <laughs> With the entire cosmos keeping a close eye on Penacony, I assure you, it won't be too hard. You really think you can pull that off? Even from Pierpoint, Point, as distant as it may be, I'm more than capable of keeping you on a tight leash. <laughs> yes! She had to put uh, Topaz away before she can, like, take out all the cards. You know what I'm saying? However, if you agree to give up that half-baked plan to go public, the IPC will assure you that we'll never jeopardize the interests of the family heads under your leadership. After all, we also need allies here in Asdana. The IPC can assist Penacony with financing, starting by acquiring 30% equity shares. With our financial support, stabilizing and rebuilding Penacony will be a piece of cake. He's basically saying this could either be a hostile takeover or it can be a collaborative one. 30% equity, you say? Who can guarantee you won't want more in the future? To be fair, that's the same amount that the App Store, Steam, uh, take from video game sales. <laughs> That's the brilliant part of it all. The answer is simple. No one. There are no guarantees. It all hinges on self-awareness and mutual respect. However, the board of directors will consider the interests of the family heads to some extent. You're a smart merchant, old Odie. Isn't the whole purpose of this elaborate game to showcase your business acumen and seek more benefits for the family? It benefits us if we both take a step back. And if that's not enough for you, I'm pretty sure that another goal of making Penacony go public is to expand the influence of the Planet of Festivities and attract more customers. Mm -hmm. I understand your concern, and I have a solution for that, too. Fine. Now I see your sincerity. As the head of the Alfalfa family, I don't think I have any reason to refuse your offer. Dot dot dot. However, as their chosen one, I still need one final answer. Oh. So you're Sheepay's chosen one? Go ahead. I'm listening. When I was a child, I heard the adults recite the tale of the ancient Amberera. About the ascension of Shipe, the Harmony, and the downfall of Enna, the Order. The Order and the Preservation used to be close in ancient times. So, why does the IPC, as a follower of the Amber Lord, seek collaboration with the family instead of aligning with the Order? Because the order sucked. The answer is simpler than you think. It's all about credits. Everyone's favorite thing and the universally recognized currency among the stars. The IPC has the power to perpetually ensure their value. With each new world integrated into the credit system, the IPC adds another building block to its cause. Eventually, all exchanges, capital, and businesses will operate within a unified monetary system. 
Hmm. Interesting. By then, all planetary developments will be recorded in accounts with well-defined values and the ability for exchange and circulation. And the heart of everything will be Klepoth's credit. Hmm. Money. Ugh. And then the IPC will be able to exert influence over everything. Our intention is to establish enduring preservation. So I'm sure you can understand. This universe doesn't need two types of order. Interesting. Hmm. Like, it's funny because logically speaking, that's sa it's sound. But like the implications of it, and it, if you were to apply that to real world or, you know, real world examples, that's like a, it is basically seizing control of the entire universe's economy, which is basically like a dictatorship. You know, everyone else has to fall in line. <laughs> well said. Now you've convinced me. All right. Tell me your solution. Let's see if we're thinking the same thing. Then let's continue our conversation. Please, Topaz, invite Sweet Dew to join us at the table. Sweet Dew? <gasps> Himiko is the... Thank you for your presence, Miss Himiko. <laughs> let's go! Wow! Okay. I mean, this... this I'm impressed, Himiko, to be uh, held at s in such high regard with Jade, of all people. You know, a director from the IPC. Dang, the Astral Express has a uh, bigger pull than I expected. And she, uh, and Himiko herself is pretty cunning. Please allow me to introduce her to you, Mr. Alfalfa. This is Miss Himiko from the Astral Express, one of the future shareholders of Penacony. What? Bro, if we own this place, we could come here. We come back here every time. We can have a reserved like resort and like dream credits or whatever credits that they have here. Damn, dude. Ashel Express is balling out. I've heard so much about you, Mr. Alfalfa. It's an honor to meet you as representative of the Astral Express. <laughs> this stunning lady is the navigator of the Astral Express. It's a pleasure to meet you. I believe everyone here is familiar with the general contents of the proposal. After this round of financing, the IPC is expected to hold 30% of Penacony's shares. Then, the IPC will transfer 5% of that stake to the Astral Express and recommend Miss Himiko as an independent director to honor the sacrifices and contributions made by the former Nameless to the Land of the Dreams. That's a pretty good deal. Owning 5% of Penacony? I'll hold out for more, but you know what? I, I'm just glad we're at the table. <laughs> do we get do we get residual income as trailblazers? While this decision isn't finalized yet, we are honored that everyone here recognizes the way of the trailblaze. While the nameless didn't embark on their journeys for fame or fortune, if this is the wish of both the family and the IPC, I will represent the Astral Express and fulfill my duty as a member of the board of directors. We got a we got a seat in the board of directors. Hell yeah. Although I'm kind of curious. I feel like this is a ruse. Like I'm like is this real or is this just uh, a bargaining chip? Is Himiko really in on the plan or is she or are we about to get swindled too? The entire crew has agreed to assist in the reconstruction of Penacony. Beyond that, in our future travels, we are committed to bringing the beautiful dreams of the planet of festivities to more worlds. I, well, I don't want to be on the hook for stuff, you know? I, I feel like the trail, the trailblaze, the Yashul Express, the strongest asset we have is our independence. And yet we still have strong power and influence. This might, this could be a shackle. Of course. All cooperation is based on one premise. Okay, okay. The path of harmony in Penacony must not be distorted again. And such a tragedy must never recur. Let's go, Himiko. Okay, okay. You know, y'all better stay in line. Otherwise, we're gonna 
because we came we came over here and and you know we shaked shit up we could totally do that again <laughs> after the negotiations <sighs> oh. old ot is in agreement so the issue is settled i presume what about the remaining family heads they will soon realize the situation when old odie answered the last question he represented more than just the alfalfa family when should we schedule the formal negotiations? I'll handle the arrangements. It's all up to you. I'll step back and let you handle the negotiations and take over. I won't be involved. Uh, but Miss Jade, this is... Oh, she's putting, she's resting all of this on her shoulders. Delegating. Aventurine initiated this case, and you were his project partner. If that kid hadn't overplayed his hand, I wouldn't have been pushed to the forefront. <laughs> She's saying that like if Adventuring did his job right, she would have just stayed at Pure Point and none of this, it wouldn't have involved her. I came here today to help you sort out the toughest issue. I trust you'll be able to wrap things up quite nicely, little Yelena. That's her real name, Yelena? Oh. It's pretty. Of course. There won't be any problems. And please, give Diamond my assurance. It's cl it's prettier than Topaz. Don't worry. Diamond has always trusted us. I'll put in a good word for you. And you'll have your P45 position back in no time. Oh yeah, she got she got demoted. Radiant Feldspar. <laughs> what a fantastic ship. Well, now that my business is done, it's time for me to indulge in my own little hobby. What is that? Does it involve the whip? <laughs> ah, you want to open a Bon and Jade exchange branch on this ship too? Opportunities like this don't come around often. Just look at the guests on this ship. They're surely holding a wealth of valuable treasures. <laughs> Should get demoted to janitor duty? What? Silver Wolf? Topaz helped out a whole planet and she's gonna just be mopping up over at Pier Point over at wherever their headquarters is at. Well, I'll take my leave. A pawn shop can't run without a boss. See you around, Topaz. If, if anything, Defined helped. Well, right now, she she just got delegated to. If anything, Jade's like, all right, I, I did my part. You clean up this mess and, and take care of the rest. You know, I'm meanwhile, I'm off to do my own uh, freaking business venture that she has, which is setting up a pawn shop on a cruise ship. Strange hobby. I have one more question for you, Miss Jade. Hmm? Go ahead. That dose of bitter poison. I'm curious as to how you found this information. I didn't find the information. It came to me. It was from a lady concerned with the future of the Harmony. Robin? But you just met her, so it has to be someone else. Interesting. In return, I've agreed to help her with something, but that's for later. We can deal with it after we leave Panacone. Or maybe it's Himiko. I don't know, we'll see. You see, that's what investment is all about. The seeds of opportunity are already sown. They only need a little bit of nourishment to take root. And then after, all we need to do is wait patiently. Mm-hmm. Good philosophy. Like right now, for example. It's just about time my final guest boarded the ship. Now, is that me now? Is I, Am I the final guest? Oh, is it Firefly? Yep, Firefly's on the ship! We're gathered around the chest. Like, why don't we just open it? Sneaking in was way easier than I thought. The family's security is as lax as ever. Oh, maybe she's referring to Firefly. Firefly was concerned about the Harmony. So, this is the Radiant Feldspar. <laughs> so luxurious. 
A pawn shop that grants wishes. Is there really a place like that on the ship? Yeah, it sounds like it's Firefly. I'll find out for myself if the rumors are true or not. What the hell? Dude, Trotters have like an ass. Look at that ass. <laughs> Is that him? Ah, ah, come on, reunite. Uh, vanished in the blink of an eye. So the Astral Express is here, too. Go say hi! I'm gonna go say hi to Robin now. By the way, there's one more thing. Mr. Alfalfa and I discussed it. I'll present a gift to the Astral Express on behalf of the family as a token of gratitude for the Nameless's contributions to Pentacony. Yay! Please help me with the necessary arrangements. Yay, I take cash. Right away, Miss Robin. You don't have to prepare anything. I take cash. Or I take personal performances from, from Robin every now and then on the Astral Express. Can I ask you something? Oh, greetings, miss. Is there anything I can help you with? Do you know how to get to the pawn shop? What? She sounds like a weirdo. She's like, huh? Pawn shop? Ah. You must be talking about Lady Bonajay's place, right? I heard she offers uh, special services there. What? Dot 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 special services there? Come on, chat. <laughs> she has a whip. I've marked the pawn shop's location on your device. Please feel free to check it out. Lady Bonajay. I think I've heard that name somewhere before. But I want to say Is hi it from to myself. Silverwolf? Come to think of it, she disappeared after mentioning that she was going to meet with the Genius Society. Hmm. Huh. I wonder how things turned out for her. If I win... Hey, I'm talking! <laughs> okay, am I drunk? Wait, hold on. Your chest is mine. Yeah. You say that, say that to, um, to Jade. If I win, your chest is mine. <laughs> Who said I was betting with you? I did. <laughs> they are still a ball of fire as ever. Sorry, but I've got to find Lady Bonajade first. What? No! No! Go say hi to me! Going my way. Wait, that's a very interesting... Let me... Oh my god. My thing is all blown up. I gotta see what that means. Going my way. Encounter the Astral Express unexpectedly as Firefly run into... Ha ha ha! So in other words, you could have missed this if, you, if I didn't keep going. Will it allow me to get closer? I'm going around. I want to play some more. Inspection? No, it's not the best time to do that. Yes, it is. But I've got to find Lady Bonajade first. They won't let me go. Come on. Oh, there she is. I'm RP walking over. Never mind. It's too slow. <laughs> Welcome to Bonna Jade Exchange, Radiant Feldspar Branch. Hello. How should I address you, dear lady? Firefly. Just call me Samuel. What? Is that her code name? <laughs> that's kind of, ugh, that's, that's interesting. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I thought Sam was an acronym, but like to kind of play it off as short for Samuel. Ah, very interesting direction. Samuel. Nice name. So what do you need, Miss Samuel? And what are you willing to give up in return? Wants the trailblazer's undying love. I want to keep on living. And for that, I'm willing to give up everything I have. Everything you have? She's like, what? But possessions are like the the best thing in the world. She doesn't even understand. That's right. Everything. Miss Samuel, I think you'd best turn around. It seems you're not quite familiar with the term pawn. <laughs> what do you mean? I know, she makes it sound like this is like a wish. Oh, she's like a wish giver. Like exchanging anything for anything. But reality is just like, nah, dude. I'm trying to run a regular pawn shop. I mean it literally. I sense your burning desire to live, but unfortunately, 
You don't have anything of equal value to offer. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> she says. Oh. She thought she found some like like a solution. Kind of embarrassing. <laughs> okay. A pawn shop that grants wishes. <laughs> I see. It's just a marketing gimmick. Is she that naive? <laughs> this is very much the uh, the situation of, aw, honey, aw, aw, so innocent. Well, that's quite a harsh accusation. I understand you may not fully comprehend what I mean, but don't worry, I'll help you understand. Help her understand. Go and talk to these people. They're all customers of my pawn shop. See for yourself if their wishes have come true. Once you've done that, come back to me. I'll help you understand the true meaning of pawn and make you realize what you're missing. That Lady Bonajade feels more like a money lender rather than the owner of a pawn shop. A money lender. Well, you don't, you don't even know what a pawn shop is. Anyway. I'll do as she says and see what happens. Look, they're right there. Am I going to am I going to ignore myself again? Which one should I pop? Is Hoyoverse purposely teasing this interaction from ever happening? That's kind of mean, Hoyoverse. One, two, three, four, five. Don Hung and Void Ranger Jive. Don't change the words. No, it's not the best time to do that. When will it be the best time? Sorry, I'll catch up with you later. Deny. They're they're really teasing it out. What the hell? All right, Stacy, what do you got to say? <laughs> Firefly doesn't know what a girl. pawn shop is. Coming back to lose more money, huh? Ugh, enough talk. Let's get started. This will be our final game. I'm betting my entire fortune. Oh, girl, don't do that. Oh, a big talker, huh? <laughs> All right, let's see what you've got. Owl eyes. I, I won? I actually won! <laughs> this, this can't be. You lost to me 10 times in a row. How could I possibly lose to you at such a crucial moment? It's true. Lady Bonna Jade has truly blessed me. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, my luck has turned for the better. Great new era for Stacy, the master gambler has arrived. <laughs> oh, girl, cash out now. This ain't a life for you. You lost ten times in a row. That's bad luck. I've prepared a gift for you, Dorothy. Check this out. Dorothy and Dell. Whoa, what a beautiful necklace. Is it made of cymothane? It's stunning. How did you know I love jewelry made of cymothane? It has the same purple hue as the necklace my dad gave my mom. I've never told anyone about it. How did you find out, Del? These are kids! Whatever. So... So... The, this fool's about to propose. Well... Will you go out with me? Eh, it's more innocent. <laughs> nah, you, you guys are kids. You can't fool me. I... I will. R really? I mean... Really? I never said yes before because I thought you had no idea what I liked. But this gift made me realize you were actually paying attention all along. Oh trying my gosh. to learn everything about me. So yes, I will. Oh, wonderful. My, my wish has actually come true. So shall we go, Dorothy? Let's go outside and enjoy the stunning views of the 12 hours. Yeah, let's go. Ah, uh, ah, uh, how sweet. Ah, uh, kids. Ah, <laughs> uh, this person's name is Walker. He's in a Teletron. Hey, did you see that? The gray-haired one outside. <laughs> Don't look around. Just focus on your drink. This girl's talking to a kid. Seriously, they look like a total lunatic. This girl's talking to a kid. Is that him? Ha ha ha! I'm kind of curious what I'm up to. This, I'm on this ship just just doing random shenanigans, which is kind of like, I guess that makes sense. And here's 
March just like like sick of my bullshit. Chirp, chirp. <laughs> Look at me. I fall and die. <laughs> I mean, that's basically what I'm about to do. Origami bird. Hey, little birdie. Come on. Oh, March is on it too. Oh, come down already. Everyone's staring at you. No, it's not the best time to do that. Sorry. I'll catch up with you later. They really want you. They really want to tease it out this whole time. All right, let's talk to Walker. Yeah. I'm sure he has right. something more interesting to say. Got him. He's been hiding at the moment of Sol and Pinnacone, using a fake identity. And he even posed as a professor at Paperfold Academy. I've made a deal with the family. I'll leave the extradition related paperwork to you. How'd I find him? Well, let's just say I had some help from an influential figure. Don't ask for the details. 22 years. Yeah. 22 years of chasing this guy all over the cosmos. Scary eyes. You know, never thought it'd end up like this. Right here. I'm gonna hang up for now, partner. I need to raise a glass to myself. Walker hangs up the phone and a drop of fuel seeped out of his deep metal constructed eye sockets. Those were the tears of an Intellitron. All of their wishes actually did come true. <laughs> but I just don't understand. How did she do it? And what does Pawn really mean? I should go back and ask. Can I? I want to get that back, chest. Miss Samuel. Yeah. I found those people. And it seems their wishes did come true after visiting the Bonnage Aid Exchange. But I'm not sure what you want me to see. They all seem to be living fulfilled lives. Not so fast. This step was just to show you that the Bonnage Aid Exchange is genuine. That I had the power to grant their wishes. And now, I'll tell you the price they paid. Dell was from a wealthy family. He was head over heels for Dorothy and wanted to win her heart. So he made a deal with me. He put up his entire fortune in exchange for a gift that would impress Dorothy. Entire fortune? Dude, Jade's just asking for money. Does Firefly have money? I did take money from her in, in 2.0. It was a piece of cake for me, thanks to my IPC connections. However, Dell will soon find himself evicted from the dreamscape because he can't afford his room. Whether he can bounce back from poverty, well, that depends on him. What? Is this a monkey monkey's paw situation? Jade's just extorting them with cash? That doesn't seem like a good deal at all. Let's just hope that necklace will keep the relationship from crumbling. Then there's Stacy, a lady with a gambling addiction. She wanted some serious luck, but she had nothing to offer. So I took something else instead. I took away all her close relationships. What kind of power does Jade have? From the moment she stepped out of the Bona Jade Exchange, every casino in the cosmos would remember her name. But her parents and siblings would sever ties with her. And it would be impossible for Stacy to make any real friends again. She will accrue a vast wealth due to her good luck. But she'll never be able to use it for the people who truly matter to her. As for Detective Walker, he spent two decades chasing down a wanted criminal for some heinous crime. But he never caught the guy. In his desperation, he came to me. Wait. What is Firefly going to sacrifice? If Firefly wants to keep living, I bet you the most valuable thing she can that Jay can take is her relationship with me. That's fucked up. Or maybe she has to relinquish everything about the Celeron Hunter stuff. Interesting. He offered his own memory system as collateral. In due time, his memories as a detective will be erased and he will completely forget his own identity and all the sacrifices he has made. Interesting, don't you think? I fulfill people's desires and grant them favors, and soon they come back to me with even greater desires. 
Ugh. It is a monkey's paw situation. I don't like that, Jade. When people see others' desires get fulfilled, they develop their own desires. It seems like an endless cycle, but it does have a goal. In the end, I will get what I desire from this whirlpool. But what are you going to do with those things? I mean, I get the fortune thing, but like taking away one girl's relationships and taking away this guy's memories, like what do you have to gain from that? And patience happens to be one of my greatest strengths. So now, do you understand what you must give up, Miss Samuel? Or should I address you as AR-26710, a remnant of Glamoth's Iron Cavalry? Well, she does have her connections. Hmm. I'm not surprised. You are much calmer than I expected. Entropy loss syndrome. Truly an unjust misfortune, isn't it? Yes, the snake higher ups in Glamoth implemented such a failsafe within the genes of their warriors. Just to make sure the Republic's most powerful weapons wouldn't fall into the wrong hands. I knew it! So, this isn't just some random disease. They put all the soldiers that they made to fight in the, the war from the trailers. They were genetically modified, but they, they put a failsafe. Like, they basically implemented this quote-unquote disease for this reason right here. It, this is intentional for what she's experiencing. As for the price, those iron cavalries weren't exactly seen as regular, independent humans, so there wasn't really a price to be paid. However, you are different. You're now oh, a stellar hunter, a living being named Firefly. Naturally, you want to continue your existence, but with the firmament front gone, the people who know the secret and can cure the disease are nowhere to be found. Are you suggesting that the IPC has a remedy? Well, there might be a silver lining. That's all I can say for now. I see. It's no wonder you said I can't provide anything of equal value. Because nothing I own holds any meaning. So... You're going to ask me to personally restrain my partners to ensure my own survival? Unfortunately, that's not quite the case. Oh, yeah, they all do have bounties, including Firefly. Partners. A nice way to put it. Now I'm even more curious about the Stellaron Hunters. Each of you has your own identity and a special bond with each other. It's strong and intimate, and yet it allows for independence. Just as the Ten Stonehearts follow Diamond, you follow your own leader. I wonder what they are like. And if all Stellaron Hunters are like you. Traveling on the path of finality, but struggling against your destiny. Attempting to move in the opposite direction. I really hope that one day, all of you will come and visit my pawn shop. I'll be waiting patiently for that day. Can I see this as an invitation? From Diamond to the Stellaron Hunters while keeping the IPC in the dark? Consider it more of a personal offer from myself. It doesn't represent the IPC or the Strategic Investment Department. The Stellaron Hunters have interacted with the IPC, but not the Ten Stonehearts. Our paths have never crossed. As for your offer... I can pass it along to my partners. But I have a question. You know who I am. And you must know that my partner is keeping an eye on this room. If she wanted to, she could let the entirety of Pierpoint know about it within a few mere seconds. What drives you to take such a risk and extend this invitation on behalf of Diamond? Even if it could lead to your downfall. Simply put, you and I are the same. What? Please elaborate. 
However, Damn it, it faded away. Like okay. you Stellaron hunters or the Astral Express, we band together merely to obtain what we want. Oh, look it! Silhouettes of, of future IPC characters we're gonna run into? Are any. Is this diamond right here? Each of us has our own past and destined ends. And on this journey, we have been invited by Diamond to join him. This journey could be either brief or long, as each of us carries a void in our hearts that can only be filled from the outside. So, Diamond made us a promise to divide the power of the Emanator of Preservation into ten pieces and give each of us a cornerstone to fill that void. Mortal flesh is fragile, yet my heart is unyielding like the monolith. For without this resolve, the way of preservation would fade into oblivion. So, you understand? This pledge goes beyond a mere oath. It's our collateral in exchange for opportunities, wealth, survival, and a future. And whatever we gain from it will fortify the Stonehearts in return, allowing us to achieve the great cause of the preservation when the war among the eons eventually comes. Oh my gosh. Is that a hint that of what's to come? <laughs> I understand. Take your time, child. You don't need to give me an immediate answer. Like I said, patience is one of my greatest strengths. Hmm. If fate turns that page, our paths will cross again. It's a shame, though, that this pawn shop can't give me what I desire. My last attempt in Penacony. <laughs> well, it ends with hope. Lady Bonajade? I've come to deliver the collaterals promised. Oh, we're, Turns we're back. Out, the meeting to decide the future of Penacony went much smoother than expected, with little debate. What? We're we're fast traveling that whole part. I wanted to see that. That should be a cutscene. Oh, the Charmony Festival's opening ceremony is starting soon. I should head down and take a look. This airship has quite a few treasures. A bountiful harvest. Hold on. I, there's there's Boot Hill and Adventuring right there. Did they just make up? We, we didn't even get a continuation of the scene that they had together. Remember, I can take you out with just one shot whenever I choose. <laughs> Cute burps. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be my honor. Don't worry, I hate cheating at the table. <laughs> you better. Ah, look who's here. The great hero of the Astral Express, the most dazzling trailblazer in all of Penacony. Uh huh, uh huh, yes. Oh, you're here too. <laughs> long time no see, friend. Has it been that long? What are you guys whispering about, huh? Oh, wait. I don't care about event what Adventuring has to say. I want to say. Why are you on the side of. I why are you on the IPC side now, cowboy? This fella is also tracking down that son of a gun. What's that saying again? The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Oh. He held him at gunpoint asking for a specific employee at the IPC. Interesting. Well, let's set aside those under the table dealings for now, partner. Don't want to spoil the festive mood of the Charmony Festival. I agree. Now let's congratulate Mr. Trailblazer. I hear the family intends to thank the crew at the Charmony Festival. It's a real pity I can't personally be there to witness this. Yeah, why? You're sure left in a hurry, eventually. Well, my job was just to give the IPC an opening. Other things aside, I think I did a pretty good job at achieving this. While you were at Dreamflux Reef, we were actually close by. You wouldn't have been able to dig up so much dirty information without the help of a knowledgeable friend. But that emanator didn't pull any punches. <sighs> My body couldn't hold out too long. Otherwise, this would have been settled in a much cleaner manner. I'd like to thank you for all your help in the battle, cowboy. <laughs> no problem. 
And punishing the wicked and eradicating evil is a top priority. Would have been strange if we sat it out. Making an entrance like that, us Galaxy Rangers are making a comeback. Okay. Reckon you'll meet quite a few followers of the hunt on your journey. Do me a favor and pass on my regards, will ya? Sure. What were you guys chatting about? <sighs> Forget it. I'm not one to beat around the bush. I've got a score to settle with a high-ranking executive fella Oswaldo. named Oswaldo Schneider. And this flamboyant fella here can help me find him. Okay. Interesting. I wonder how... I wonder if this is gonna play out. Or if, or if this is gonna be settled off screen like a bunch of other things that I'm kinda disappointed in. Uh, the feud between the marketing development department and the strategic investment department is well known across the cosmos. But what I didn't expect was the involvement of the Galaxy Rangers in this feud. Okay. So in other words, the department that he's in has a feud with the department that Oswaldo Schneider's in. Is that enough? But I'm assuming that this guy is out for blood. There's like factions within the IPC. Looks like things are about to get spicy. I hope you guys have fun at the festival. Thank you. And I also hope you enjoy yourself, great hero of Pentaconi. <laughs> I'll pass. But I do hope you guys have fun. If you don't mind, let's play a few rounds next time. Yeah, no, I'm not gambling against you. You have a, you have a luck superpower. It's time to let down our hair and enjoy ourselves on days like this. <laughs> I hope you can enjoy yourself to the fullest, oh great hero of Pentaconi. That's not enough, Boot Hill. We need more Boot Hill content. This is starting to feel like it's wrapping up the the whole saga. So now I'm gonna talk to um Mr. Ratio over here. Ah, yes. I remember you. Your performance at Herta's space station was adequate, I suppose. Ah, pfft. <laughs> Okay, Ratio. Ah. Hmm. No wonder that gambler likes you so much. Oh. Can't... He talks about me? I didn't know you were here. You know, Mitri. Can you please get your autograph as Ratio? I didn't know you were here, too. Uh, I, I guess I, I want to be more casual. Because this guy's so uppity. kind of want to take him down a peg. I don't want to... Definitely not number three. Do you know adventuring? This individual is my responsibility during the trip. Hmm. Nothing more than an errand from the Office of Academic Affairs. Very well. The Charm Money Festival is about to commence soon. Uh, take advantage of this unique opportunity. A blend of work and play is essential for superior knowledge absorption. Sure. How do, how do you rate the The executives of the IPC and the Guild say that we are strategic partners. Yet, from my perspective, I am invariably the teacher, and he, along with you and every other individual, is the student. <laughs> okay. From this perspective, Venturine isn't what you'd call an ideal student. Yet, he's also not utterly obtuse. Alas, the void within him can never be filled by talent and knowledge. <laughs> Let's hope he doesn't turn into a philosophical zombie. Admit it, you care about the guy, which is why you wrote that one note to him. I thought you were going to make me get my act together. Ah, saying such a thing merely indicates that you have not truly grasped the essence of learning. The principle of balancing work and relaxation is scientifically grounded, with the relevant proof process detailed on page 21 of the 31,467th issue of the academic journal Star Caesar. Acquiring knowledge aims to enhance living. Don't invert priorities like those dolts at the guild. All right. That makes sense. Well, at least I'm glad you acknowledged that part. I hope you have fun at the festival, Dr. Ratio. Hmm. Then you'll excuse me. I have three more people to talk to, damn. <gasps> I got to talk to Topaz. Let's go. Hey there, girl. How's it going? Well, if it isn't my old friend. It hasn't been long, and yet, here we are again. <laughs> How are you? I came to pet your dog. 
I am in the mood for a job change. Wait, 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 wait. I'm gonna prompt her like trying to recruit me. I'm in the mood for a job change, uh, Miss Topaz. Uh, are you still hiring? Hmm? So direct. Aren't you afraid I might take you seriously? <laughs> so what, what if you do? Huh? <sighs> Thinking about it though, the lives of the nameless are so excessively exciting. I heard you guys pulled off a big stunt, cutting down the Oak family in one fell swoop. Yeah, we're kind of a big deal. <sighs> if one day you're tired and looking for a change in work environment, or you want a desk job, just contact me. I take cash. <laughs> Look how bustling this ship is. Not bad. Someday when I'm less tied up, I plan to host a grand party on my eco ship, and you'll all be on the guest list. <sighs> Let's go! Yes, I would love to attend that party. Are you also able to transform yourself? Like, like how Adventuring transforms himself. Are you also able to transform yourself, Topaz? Being a part of the Ten Stone Hearts? Transform? What are you saying? Uh, don't. Yo, don't hide. Don't hide that from me. Come on. Oh! I, I understand now. You're referring to Aventurine's cornerstone, right? <sighs> Sorry. Compared to him, my ability is not as visual. What is it? Oh my god, you better f***ing say it. <sighs> Guess there is no harm telling you. The abilities of the Ten Stone Hearts as cornerstones are all different. Some can even read your thoughts, grasp your desires, so, be careful. That's basically what Jade does. Uh, now that I think about it, it was good that Branya got there when she didn't Bellabog. <laughs> if she came any later, we probably wouldn't have ended up as friends. She considers me her friend! We are so in chat. Hello? Wait, this, is this the first time I'm meeting her? I'm, I guess I'm just walking up to introduce myself. Hello, Miss Jade. Hey there, lively guy. Welcome to the Bona Jade Exchange. What should I call you? I, I think my name is Dozer. That's literally my handle. I'm gonna take a screenshot, hold on. I wanna say my name is Sunday, just to troll her. My name is dot 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 Sunday. Hmm, not a bad name. Just lacking in virtue. So, Mr. Sunday, what do you wish for? And what are you willing to sacrifice for it? Does she, is she playing dumb? Does she not know who I am? Revive Akavili. <laughs> Make Nanook bow down before me. I want to be the CEO of IPC. Oh, this is your wish. Yes, make give me money. Lady Bonaje doesn't even blink. You're guessing she doesn't have any sense of humor. <laughs> Sounds simple enough. Very pragmatic. Then let's discuss the cost. Oh, we are so in. No way, this is the end game already? That's cheesy. I'm listening. To fulfill this wish, the thing I need is simple. The tail of an animal. What well, animal? It's a two-legged animal. With black fur, a round head, and long ears, it's omnivorous and is prone to mood swings. Most importantly, it has mastered the human language and can communicate. I can't help but feeling like that this is some kind of hint. Like, uh, not, not like obviously it's a hint, but I can't help but feeling like this is a hint of something to come. Okay. Bring its tail to me as collateral, and your dreams will come true. I'm gonna remember that. Seems that Lady Bonajade is not without a sense of humor. You have to admit, her skill in using dark humor is superior to yours. <laughs> Hopefully there are scissors on the express. May fate bring us together again, Mr. Trailblazer. Oh, she knows who I am. Well, you are gonna be on the next banner. Lady Bonajade stares at you, seemingly piercing through all your desires and thoughts. There's our Argenti's right there. Argenti, what are you doing here? Wait, is his voice is his voice thing still broken? That sucks for this guy. He doesn't get to be voiced. 
We met again, my dear friend. Your journey of the beauty is even more elegant than mine. My most sincere regards to you. Um, sincere regards to you too, dear friend. You flatter me too much. When will I be able to unlock a new path then? When will I be able to unlock a new path then? Interesting. Unlock an eloquent and picturesque choice of words, yet you have already set forth on the path of beauty. I have heard of your valiant deed in leading others to vanquish the old men of evil. Though the tale bears a tinge of regrets, you have undoubtedly championed beauty and justice. May a driller smile upon you. The old men of evil. If an admirer of the beauty gets lost in the pursuit of power, they risk descending into the omen of evil, a form which is neither a human nor beast. Interesting. Although Mr. Sunday did not cross paths with the, with the path of beauty, his actions were no different from the omen of evil, a lamentable soul lost on the path of righteousness. Truly a matter of deep regret. Why were you not there during the final battle? I'm ashamed to admit, and his dream was too realistic. Oh, he probably saw a driller. I couldn't bear to bid farewell to a fallen friend who had long turned into a beast. I lingered in that illusory dream for far too long. Ah, his voice and smile were too vivid. Oh, given that he was the one that rescued Aventurine, for him to have succumbed to the dream, uh, I must have been like a really cherished friend. I didn't pass the trial of beauty this time, spending much, spending much time in self-reflection over my own hesitation. Yet, I wish for Adrilla to remain my beacon, a banner for me to strengthen my determination for the beauty. I hope you have fun at the festival. <laughs> Thank you, and may the beauty always be with you. God damn, that sucks that he's not voiced. Poor guy, whoever voiced him. It's a very strange bug. All right, I talked to everyone. Find a seat and wait for the opening of the Charmini Festival. Is this gonna be a really cool cutscene? For the Charmini Festival to happen here on the ship, I mean, the ship is a big ship, but compared to like the hall, <sighs> this seems like such a downgrade. Interesting. Mm, the festival hasn't started. Let's take a quick break. Oh, okay. I'm. Watch, I'm gonna fall asleep and miss everything. Hi, we meet again. Yes! It's here! Finally, chat! Okay, okay. I'm ready. I'm ready for you, Firefly. But the writing in this game can get really good at certain points. I hope that this gets the treatment. Who's that? It's really you! I knew I didn't get the wrong person. You saw me? You mistook me someone else for me? You saw me? I want to say other things, but okay, you saw me. Yes, it's just, I didn't get the chance to say hello. There's still some time before the Charmony Festival starts. Do you want to chat? Uh, girl, no. I want to get on uh, a ship and take you out on a date somewhere else where it's not, we're not surrounded by stuffy ass uh, people and continue our tour around Golden Hour. Yeah, yeah, that sounds fun. You walk and talk with Firefly, stopping in your tracks when when more comes into view. Two murder cases, a showdown with the IPC's ambassadors, the legacy of the Nameless, and a remnant of the Order who wishes to replace an eon-created paradise with a dream. You guys even ended up shattering the dream. <laughs> it's truly been quite a vacation. Yeah, that's not a vacation. <laughs> oh, we're, we're, we're shooting the shit right now, chat. Okay. It's a good thing that you guys managed to overcome all those difficult problems. Congratulations! After the Charmony Festival's opening, will you guys be leaving again? I don't know where the, our next de destination will be. I'm not sure if we'll be able to depart smoothly. I think I'm gonna go for the second one. Like, I feel like it's too good to be true to just leave. I'm not sure if we'll be able to depart smoothly. <laughs> there will always be somewhere. After all, you guys are on the path of the trailblaze. Before joining the Stellaron Hunters, Elio told me that this journey will tell me how to live on. That's all he said. As for the rest, it's up to me to find out. You can live on by letting me pull you and having you join my team. <laughs> this should have 
her the Robin theme play. But then again, I feel like there's there's better places for us to talk alone. So, I'll pay extra attention to any leads that will let me live on. <laughs> this trip to Pentagoni is no different. Oh. No wonder you're interested in investigating the watchmaker. Yes. Sadly, I was looking in the wrong place. But I did reap some rewards. Did you reap the reward you were looking for? Do you know Miss Jade from the IPC Strategic Investment Department? Bona Jade Exchange belongs to her. She told me her price. But... Don't take the deal. Those IPC people may have ulterior motives. Yeah, I, I would know. say that. But what she wanted wasn't my answer either. Of course, I want to live on. But... What fate owes me... I want it paid back. Not passed on. No one else should be involved because this is a grudge between me and fate. Where is my option to hug her? Speaking of which... Actually... I feel that I still owe you a formal apology for... Okay, yeah, I was just gonna hug her that right now. <laughs> with the performer of the Iris family. Even the smallest of lies can turn into a betrayal as sharp as a blade. Oh. I'm sorry. She's, she's apologizing for pretending to be a performer. You shouldn't have lied to me in the beginning. No problem, you already apologized. I never felt hurt by this. It's true. Even if she had like a little scheme going on, it's not like she ever did anything to me. I never felt hurt by this. Really? Then it seems what Kafka taught me was correct. Yeah. Look where we're at now. Uh, I feel like you more than made up for it. To me, hiding is much easier than being honest. Yet, I still want to try expressing my emotions as any ordinary person would. It's that my girl. Hand. Get moving! Arrest that criminal before the Charmony Festival's opening ceremony starts. Ah, oh, you bitches! Come on! We're trying to talk! I can't believe they've chased me this far. Looks like we have to say our goodbyes. Nope, nope, no, no, I'm going with you. Go and enjoy the ceremony. Or, or, or we'll just beat them up and throw them off the ship. <laughs> so the, no, one ha no one has to know. Your cover's not blown. The script hasn't reached its end yet. We will meet again. God damn it. I'm just gonna let her go again? I hope she's okay. But if it's only those two hounds again, she'll probably be fine. Yeah! It's just two... It's just two people. You are... You are part of Glamoth's army. Iron... What was it? The Iron Fleet? No, that's the Game of Thrones. Uh, <laughs> the Iron Cavalry. I'll send a message later to check in on her. Let's go attend the Charmony Festival first. Oh, of course, yeah, because uh, I'm so invested in this festival. Ah, oh, you stupid bloodhound family pieces of shit interrupting my what could have been a date. Find a seat and wait for the open. Okay. Let's take a seat here. What am I going to view? I'm by the pool. Everything is settled, but there's still some time left. Maybe I should take a walk? Let's wait for the opening ceremony to start. Forget it. I've done enough walking around already. Let's take a seat and rest for a while. I feel I, I feel like there's nothing else to check. <gasps> Firefly text me. She has my number. It's me, Firefly. I got it all handled. Don't worry, I didn't do anything rash. I've hidden myself away. It's a pity I won't be able to see Miss Miss Robin perform. Oh, she left a little cute emoji. I wanna be able to respond! God damn it! Looks like I don't have to worry about her. Let's wait for the opening ceremony to start. Some time later. Oh, I thought people were dying. Hey, hey, Miss Robin! Hey, Miss Robin! Hey, over here, Miss Robin! 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 Marry me! Lord to the valley.
and robbing her of the concert experience. Distinguished guests, <laughs> fellow family members, ladies, gentlemen, and friends from all over the cosmos. Oh, is this the last we're gonna see of Robin? Are we are we tying up all the loose ends with her? It's a pleasure to join you all in celebrating the grandest ceremony of the Amber Era, the Charmony Festival. Firstly, on behalf of the Penaconi family's five major lineages, and on behalf of myself, I'd like to extend a warm welcome to all our guests. This is the Charmony Festival. <laughs> As you all may have noticed, this year's Charmony Festival is far from regular. Thanks to the efforts of everyone, the celebration is unprecedented in scale, with factions from across the cosmos in attendance. And this is all of them. <laughs> Dang, they really played out the Charmony Festival. This seems like such a downer. Not only that, the customary opening ceremony held at the Penaconi Grand Theater has now moved to the Radiant Feldspar, the very airship you all stand upon. We invite you to express your warmest applause and deepest appreciation for O.T. Alfalfa, head of the Alfalfa family, for his selfless devotion to the Harmony's cause. Oh boy, Miss Santa Claus. What makes this festival so uniquely significant? As is widely known, the Radiant Feldspar had to halt its voyage due to an anomaly in the Sweet Dream, sparking widespread discussion in the Twelve Hours. Thanks to the hard work of Penaconi's internal and external factions, we've finally gotten the Dreamscape back on track, just in time for the Charmony Festival. And as they say, Good things come in pairs. The Charmony Festival not only celebrates this achievement, but also marks the relaunch of the Radiant Feldspar. And finally, the last reason. Does everyone remember the Watchmaker? In truth, the family has poured their efforts into this festival just to commemorate this legendary luminary. The father of Penaconi, Mikhail Char Legwork, one of the legendary nameless who laid the foundations of Penaconi. Hey, we got name dropped. In the most bewildering times of the planet of festivities, it was he who descended from the sky with his companions, who taught us through trailblazing where freedom lies. It was also they who led the vanguard in the pioneering of the dreamscape in exchange for what is now known as the Paradise of Harmony. It can be said that Penaconi's splendid success today is deeply rooted in the trailblazing ethos the Watchmaker planted within us. Only by honoring this trailblazing spirit can we fulfill our mission and spread Harmony to a broader audience. Okay. Very cool. Aww, that's so nice of her. She's talking about us! Yes, yes she is, March. We, <laughs> we haven't even been mentioned yet. Our trailblazing spirit is unparalleled. The Express crew would have been disbanded long ago if it weren't for you. Huh. I'll say something cheeky. Obviously! Wait, why does that seem so ominous? Oh, you dumb girl. <laughs> And now, the sweet dream is back on track. All thanks to the Trailblaze, of course. If it weren't for everyone on the Astral Express, we wouldn't be able to successfully host this Charmony Festival. I feel like we're about to get hit by some terrorist attack right now. It seems like all too good to be true. Thus, with unanimous consent from the five major lineages, Penaconi's family, on behalf of all family members throughout the cosmos, offer a token of appreciation to the Nameless. Oh, I wonder if it's gonna be a big one! <laughs> I take cash. 
We will transfer ownership of the Radiant Feldspar to the Astral Express. What? A meager appreciation that we hope you will accept with grace. Look what you did, March. It is a big one. What are we going to do with the ship that's inside the dream? <laughs> can we fly this shit out of the dreamscape and into space? I'm pretty sure we can't. But then again, we are potentially 5% owner of Pentacony. Let us gift our applause and cheers to these brave and dauntless nameless. Let's hear it. Nameless, nameless, nameless. Where's the rest of us? Where's Don Hong, Welt, and Himiko? And now, I propose a toast. Oh my god. I feel like she's gonna get sniped. <laughs> to Harmony. To the Trailblaze. To the future of Penacony and the universe. And to the generous Alfalfa family head, Mr. O.T. Alfalfa. It feels kind of weird to thank him. Cheers! Yay! Cheers! Cheers, chat! Cheers! <gasps> Cutscene! Oh no, someone's gonna die. <laughs> <sighs> to make a decision like that, this little bird is no less capable than her brother. <laughs> as well, as well. <laughs> right. But have you forgotten someone, my gray haired friend? I put a bomb on this ship. You have 10 minutes to find it. Better hurry. Huh? I fing knew it! This gets shoved into my hands. <laughs> and <Yeah>. thus. Nani? <laughs> right? And thus, Sparkle comes back into the story as a terrorist. I was just enjoying that cutscene. Oh no! Now it's like a bomb diffusion. <laughs> nice, nice on the sound alerts, by the way. <laughs> There's still so many bombs. Now's not the time for plot twists. I can't handle this alone. Time to create a group and inform everyone. Look at the smug cheek, chibi version of her. It's Among Us. One, 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 one. Report the issue, situation about the bomb. What the hell? We got a problem, friends. There's an imaginary neutron bomb on this ship. Keep reporting about the bomb. Oh, that's me talking. It's all thanks to that mass fool. From where... Th oh my gosh! What is she, Silver Wolf? She just g goes into our group chat? Kick her, kick her! Miss Sparkle will explain the situation personally. Oh my gosh. And I was gonna pull for you because actually she's a really good unit. How'd you get into this group? Cliche thing to say. I'm gonna say turning yourself in, huh? Time for us to teach you a lesson. <laughs> okay, that wasn't what I was gonna say, but alright. Sure, they come through the internet and try and catch me. Alright, down to business. From where to be the fireworks? Is everyone flabbergasted yet? Where where Miss Sparkle's buttons all confiscated already? Why is the bomb timer still active? Oh my god, let me What the hell? Is this a group chat with everyone? <laughs> Actually, all credit goes to the brave, our brave hounds. Thanks to their meticulous efforts in gathering the buttons, Miss Sparkle was able to press all of them one by one. Miss Sparkle certainly worked her finger to the bone, pressing through a whopping 100,000 buttons. We spent a whole 48 system hours on. Dot dot dot. What the fr what the fridge is wrong with you? Do not be crass, my silver cowboy. I want to be dot 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 because the other two did dot dot dot. I don't even know uh, Sparkle. She knocked me out one time. You're appreciating his, rec his receipts, of course. It's still down. Oh my god. Robin's in the chat too! I'm oh, sorry. I'm going to wait till everything's done because I'm not. I'm able to read that fast. Uh, oh, Topaz is here. All right. So is adventuring. This is this group chat is for literally everyone. God damn it. All right, backed up here. Your appreciation is received. Of course, it was still down to Miss Sparkle's luck. I don't know why, but there were a total of 16,537 esteemed dream chasers who volunteered to help Mistress Sparkle bear her burden. Girls who like to smile are always the ones with decent luck. Anyway, the bomb Miss Sparkle placed was on the 
on the cruise ship is hidden among 999 dolls. You bright-eyed people will surely find where the real bomb is hidden. Good luck. She left the chat. How many? Don't panic. We'll deal with this together. Everyone, please don't make any commotion to cause unnecessary panic. I'll arrange for the family members to prep for evac. But we'll still have to rely on you all to find and defuse the bomb. The Oak family has always relied on the strength of the order to guarantee everyone death never occurs in a dream. But the blessing of the order is now lost. Its consequences may be unimagin unimaginably detrimental. Oh my god. So the order was the reason why people didn't die in the dream? Interesting. If anyone finds anything, please update the group promptly. The beauty is duty bound. IPC will lend our aid too. Don't worry, everyone. Want to bet who will survive this? Adventuring. <laughs> Dr. Rachel leaves. Let's go! Okay. All set. Let's start following the plan. What's the plan? The plan was just to look around. Oh, it's... You finally arrived, oh great gray haired little one. I'm the constable around these parts. And right now, I'm posing as a bomb. Okay, I'm wasting time listening to it. You're not... You're not very good at character design, are you? Bombs? Great haired little one. So am I great or am I little? <laughs> Bombs are playable characters now. Fine. I'm now the bomb demon then. Satisfied? If not, you'll just have to make do. All right. Now that you've found me, it's my turn to complete my mission. Next, a countdown from five, and then explode. All right. Throw it off the ship. Five, four, one. Where's three? Did, Did I, I miss a, a number? Oh, so it. No matter though. I've never learned how to count before. I mean, Bomb Demon Doll has never learned how to count. I'm not even a real bomb. Was it surprising? Shocking? Horrifying? No. Really? Fine. That's too bad then. You really haven't learned how to win a pro loaf. The bomb's gonna go off anyway with everyone evacuated, and there goes the ship that we just received for free. This constable doll finally falls silent. You open it up, more like tear it apart, though so that sounds cruel. And uncover its true nature, a mere toy equipped with a remote speaker. Alright, so that wasn't the bomb. I thought we had 10 minutes. Oh wait, Black Swan is in this chat. There's, there's progress with the bomb situation. I've got good news and bad news. Which one do you want first? You're here too? <laughs> Simply put, I found I found 131 bombs that aren't real bombs. Wow! Massful really knows how to pull a stunt. Don't worry. Proce process of elimination is also a problem is also a problem-solving tactic. The evacuation of the family is underway. The bloodhounds are hot on the investigative trail. Keep it up, everyone. At least I made some progress. Gotta keep working at it. Yeah, she said 10 minutes. Come on, come on, chop chop. This Charmony Festival sucks. This firmer doll is a sparkle look-alike. Okay. According to the book, compilation of sparkle of all vocabulary in modern and contemporary times, the term fulmer, fir firmer was first coined in 2005 AE on the sparkle planet and sparkle star system. Its original meaning is fluffy. Nowadays, the inhabitants of the sparkle, sparkle planet often use firmer, especially to refer to plush dolls. In other words, firmer doll translates to fluffy doll 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 doll. It may sound peculiar, but considering its sparkle origin, it actually makes a lot of sense. A firmer doll is staring right at you. Stare back. A firmer doll continues to stare right at you. Continue to stare back. Firmer doll's eyes never blink. Honestly, if they did, it would be quite unsettling. Anyway, it's just an ordinary plush doll. Can you ex really expect it to utter a single word? If you don't speak, then silence equates to <laughs> consent. <laughs> Keep staring at it. It must be pointed out that the doll has no suspicious features at all. It exudes from within an aura befitting of a firmer doll, not that of an imaginary neutron bomb. Which means there is no need to bother it anymore. It makes both you and the doll appear rather pitiful. Best to promptly put an end to this farce. They put more dialogue in that, but not more dialogue with Firefly. Come on. Dag gum wubba boo. I give up. What's wrong, Silver Cowboy? This guy is totally gay for Boot Hill. And for Argenti. I found 217 talking dolls. <laughs> it takes a picture. It's kind of funny to think someone like Boot Hill would take a picture on his phone and send it, you know? Ha 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 ha. <laughs> what the heck is 
this? And that's after I got help from the hounds that and that man with, pla with plaster head. Who knows when we'll find them all if we looked for them ourselves. That's a shame. Oh, Welter. Knowing that fool's habits, I'm afraid we're going to have to keep uh, filtering through the wrong answers. Don't fret. The beauty will guide us. Okay. Ha! We meet again. I am Penacone's Spain detective. Oh, you're not. Got yourself into a pickle? I'm more than happy to help. But unfortunately, I'm preoccupied with a couple of unsolved cases. So, you'll have to wait your turn. This is very elaborate. Is this going to be a serious thing? Or is this filler? <laughs> I just need that bomb in your hand to tell me... Your case is related to the bomb. I need your help finding a bomb. I just need the bomb in your hands. Oh. It completely slipped my mind. Dr. Boom specializes in explosives. Oh my god. I need your help, mister. You've had quite a few run-ins with Dr. Boom. And with the recent bomb situation, you're bound to find evidence that proves Dr. Boom is the killer. The first case is the Soulblad Factory Arson case. We found a hammer, a doll, and half a liter of unidentified fluid at the scene of the crime. Our forensics results show this a red herring. The second case is the Blue Hour Auction Robbery. A gang of masked thugs broke in, stole a fragment of the Astral Express, and left behind a large hammer, a doll, and a half-dead red herring at the scene. Sorry, my head cannon of all of this is that the the player base called out Hoyoverse for having Sparkle bring in all these buttons and having it like not be relevant to the story. And so now in response to all the criticism about this element and what if it could have been just a red herring, they're like, fine then, we're gonna shove a whole sequence that has to do with the bomb at the very end. Haha, <laughs> that's what you get. Those are all the details. The way I see it, there must be a link between these two cases that would be the key to exposing Dr. Boone. I trust in your deduction. Which piece of evidence do you think is the deciding one? It's you. You're both. You're at both crime scenes. Bing, bing! Correct answer! You're good, gray hair. Your mind is pretty sharp. Great, so they made it more complicated. <laughs> right? Seeing as you've put in so much effort, I'll throw you a bone. The bomb's not here. This is only a prank I've craftily set up. Hurry, time's running out. You better find that real bomb quickly. I'm pretty sure 10 minutes have elapsed by now. We're already dead. Sparkle's voice faded, leaving behind the doll's body buzzing with white noise. It seems this pitiful doll was transformed into a megaphone by Sparkle. All right. What is this music? My friends, I bring saddening news. Tell us about it. This trial of beauty is especially dangerous. I found 145 adorable dolls, but thought they were the fool's bombs. Is this really not a trial of elation or something? No matter no matter what, please be patient, everyone. I have a feeling that as long as our virtuous patients can persuade Adrilla to, with sincere conviction, even the most difficult of problems will be so resolved. Mr. Argenti is right. Everyone, don't let your guard down. <laughs> Yumiko, spinning his words. Right now we found 496 out of 99 according to the mission thing. There it is. I hear beeping. You can call me the director doll. I often use this name in film credits. Damn. <laughs> this is so silly this whole sequence. If you didn't know, I'm the one who directed the entire farce in Penacone. As the leading man of the show, what did you think? Feel free to share your thoughts. Well, actually, due to the current plot requirements, you're only allowed to say one line. So, please try and resist the urge to share your thoughts. Right now, I just want to defuse a bomb and advance the plot. You're you're the one who made this. You made Sunday a villain. What about the action scene where Acheron had escaped, had to escape the family? What happened to Robin's journey of uncovering the truth? You have way too many storyline transitions. <laughs> I'm gonna say the last one. Fault for being duped by the masked fools. The screenplay was written by someone named Miss Sparkle. She said she graduated from Sparkle University's film directing and screenwriting program, so we instantly hit it off. Who knew that there was no such thing as the film directing and screenwriting program at Sparkle University? In fact, Sparkle University isn't even real! No! <laughs> Sparkle! 
since you're done asking questions and I'm done answering, according to the script, I must reveal to you the fact that there's no bomb here at all, thus causing you to want to kick yourself for spending this whole time listening to me prattling on, after which we will part ways. But don't fret, I've also prepared a gift for you. A dream bubble that has the thrilling life and death moments I shared with the beautiful memo keeper. If you haven't seen it yet, you should hurry up and look for Dr. Edward. Wait, this is this a real thing? A harmless chatterbox plush doll bows affectionately to you, blowing you a kiss before bounding away, vanishing into the depths of the cabin with joyful groups. Alright, there's one left. The IPC Special Investigations team is wrapping up here. We found a total of 329 dolls with no bomb. Thought I'd update this with you guys. Even even you guys can't do anything about it? Holy forking shirt balls. This is going to be a killer. Don't give up. We're close to 999. The express crew is also about to be done. Keep up the good work, everyone. I'll be ta I'll be taking over the evac team now. Good luck, everyone. All right. <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah, I should... You're a bomb? So you're the origami bird now? Oh, I almost skipped through this. Actually, there are 998 more dolls that can pack a punch just like me on the Radiant Bell Spa. Tweet. Please call them back to the Golden Sparkle Tree. I will prepare a worthy gift for your troubles. Tweet. As for that imaginary neutron bomb you want, uh, don't interrupt me. I know you never mentioned those three words to me before. <clears throat> well, the bomb isn't here. Tweet. I'm afraid you'll have to look elsewhere for it. The peculiar doll flicks his tiny ponytail and vanishes into the sky of the dreamscape. A sight much more thrilling than an origami bird. That's for the golden sparkle tree. Forget about it. Most likely just some random balderdash that sparkle made up. Good news. We found the remaining 172 dolls here, but they're also just dolls. What's going on? That girly pulling a fast one on us? Long time no see. Look at that sticker. It's from, uh, The Shining. Miss Sparkle is delighted that everyone is busying themselves over her. And so, she had me deliver a message. I knew it. I knew this matter wouldn't be so simple. You've grown some brain cells, gray hair. Miss Sparkle is pleased. Alright, enough jokes. Miss Sparkle says this message is super important, so listen up. Alright, I uh, actually a thousand jokes. To reward everyone's efforts, Miss Sparkle has decided to be magnanimous. She will... Give the coordinates of the final doll with the bomb to everyone. The time I've allotted to everyone far exceeds 10 minutes. <laughs> True. But let's all try to hurry up. Okay. Eh, something major is going down if you're if you're slow pokes. At Robin. I'm sure you don't want everyone to know that. The family's protection over Pentacony has been rendered useless. Do, do you? Uh, hurry up and move out, world saving heroes. Everyone, don't miss don't be misdirected by her appalling prank. We'll gather at the coordinates. When we catch her, we'll definitely teach her a lesson she won't soon forget. Aw, oh, look at her. Mad March. Not much time left. I hope I make it. What did the ship ever do to you, Sparkle? Now it's playing ominous music. What is this? Hello, human. We meet again. I never thought I'd see you here. Mimi the Imp Doll. I'm currently on this luxury cruise ship enjoying Panacone's consumer-friendly sugar-coated cannonballs. What about you? Are you just seeing the sights? You remind me of an old acquaintance. An acquaintance? I'm not even human. I'm a Heliobus, originally from the Lafu's Fixtral Garden. I'm passionate about researching Sienjo's subcultures, but I've slowly come to realize that Sienjo's subcultures also have their limits. I forgot what happened. But anyway, I ended up in Panacone. I wanted to study a subculture that is completely different from the Sienjo's. And boy, it's really been an eye-opening experience. That is, if I had eyes. I've come to realize the people here don't treat subcultures as actual culture. They call them mean... Mean... Memes. Yes, the meme. That's it. They even have forms. I'm good friends with a meme with sharp teeth and claws. It's very interesting. 
interest in the Sienjo Vidyanara culture. I gave it a Sienjo name, and it was delighted. Oh, speaking of which, I should go and look for it. Mimi the monster has an explosive temper, and it's never been very patient. I hope you can find a real sugar-coated cannonball, I mean bomb. Bye-bye. <laughs> the hell? That was weird. Oh, by the laughter. To think you've seen through my disguise this quickly. Honestly, my dear Mr. Greyhair, you're just like that ferocious pangolin in Madame Susan's bedroom. Enough talk. Let me defuse the bomb. Keep your shirt on. A watched pot never boils, mister. I'm on to you. You're here because you accepted bribes from the duplicitous and corrupt leader of that sparkle gang. The scoundrel who wants to become mayor of Sparkle City. Blazing bro! This evil city has fallen into depravity. As the sheriff doll, I cannot idly stand by and do nothing. And now, only this imaginary neutron bomb can completely cleanse Sparkle City of your ilk. If you wish to defeat me, you'll have to face off against the great Sparkle's dogs. They're my fiercely loyal companions, and you'll never defeat them. Oh, what the hell? We're fighting! I hope for an end to strife in the world. I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. The sheriff doll lets out a long sigh with it, with an ex with his exquisite acting feigns death. Fortunately, the imaginary neutron bomb is in here. It's best to look elsewhere. Is that Firefly? Oh shit! The doll's in the middle of the water. Twenty-eight minutes forty-six seconds. Twenty-eight minutes forty-five seconds. <laughs> You're here. Sparkle, eat my bat. <laughs> Sparkle, eat my bat. Don't come close. This bomb is very dangerous. And I'm the real Firefly. <laughs> Since you're here, I'll just keep it short. Just over half an hour ago, I received a message from an unknown sender and rushed here as soon as I could. 27 minutes, 52 seconds. 27 minutes, 51 seconds. It's just counting down, and it's plenty of time. The sweet dream has lost the protection of the order. If it were to blow up here, the consequences would be unfathomable. I've scrutinized it for a long time, but the bomb's design is incredibly unique, as if it's been locked by some mysterious path force. Apart from its creator, I fear no one knows how to deactivate it. Sampo Kotsky, I feel like, is a fool. Maybe he can help. Then we'll just have to find that person. Don't panic, there's still many people on their way. Mommy, I don't want to die. Then we'll just have to find that person. It's difficult. Time is running out and she's a master of disguise. And even if we catch her, she won't come quietly. Don't panic, there's still many people on their way. You mean the watchmaker's guests? That's a pity. Based on my experience, I don't think any of them can turn the tide on this situation. The memo keeper may be able to teleport the bomb to a deserted location, but... I... I have found a note inside the doll. This is a memetic virus.exe. Wow! Okay. Memetic... Warning, a memetic virus was applied into this imaginary neutron bomb. Memetic life forms, particularly the memo keeper, especially Black Swan, are advised to stay clear. Otherwise, exposed individuals face a 72.36 chance of turning into a banana. She means, PS, yeah, she means, PS, it's true. Try it if you dare. Holy shit. I don't know what grudges they have, but this path is a dead end, too. So that's it. There's no other way? Actually, there might be another way. Oh my gosh, she's gonna sacrifice herself? Listen to this music. She's totally gonna take it and fly away or some something crazy. 
Do you still remember? The script said that I will experience death three times in the Land of Dreams. No, Firefly! I didn't have enough good scenes with you! I think this moment heralds the third time. Like I said earlier, now's not the time for plot twists. You may already know that I have no way of evoking dreams. I employ a Stellaron Hunter special method in order to enter dreams instead. This allows me to perform feats that typical dream chasers can't. As long as I can bear the pain of the Memoria pressure, I'll be able to dive into the primal memory zone beyond the dream and extend a lifeline to the Radiant Feldspar. That's a lot of fancy words, girl. It still feels like a prank. Like, it's crazy that, like, this is the serious solution to a bomb that's planted by Sparkle. And if Sparkle's the reason why we don't get to be with Firefly, that makes Sparkle the true villain of Penacony. And for what? What's the motivation? I will take this bomb into the depths of the dreamscape. As deep as possible, where there are no living souls around. That way, at least no one will get hurt. What about you? Don't worry. I believe that this Firefly armor will be enough to take me to where I need to go before the countdown ends. And maybe even make it back safely. Oh. Father, why? I, I don't like I don't like this story choice. This is such a letdown for this to be the third way she dies. There's so many other ways that could have been far more epic or sacrificial, but this is just some bomb planted by, by a prankster. That's so dumb. Why? At present, this is our best and most logical course of action. After all, a long story deserves a happy ending. The happy ending is with you, Firefly. I have some words to share with you. Though they were spoken to me by Miss Acheron. She said that the so-called impossible is merely something that is yet to happen. At the moment, there are so many things that seem impossible. But are they really never going to happen? Maybe it's just that the moment to disprove these impossibilities hasn't arrived yet. Whether it be a literal ending, Suffering akin to death or a harrowing deathscape. Deathscape? Before the appointed destination arrives, they are all the same. Yet I can still make Mary had choices. I also firmly believe that that when that moment arrives for us to make a choice, the answer to our end will already be within our hearts. Ugh. Oh, man. It is not destiny that shapes us, but we who shape destiny. That sounds like a line you would say when you do your ultimate. The Astral Express and the Stellaron Hunters are like <laughs> light and shadow. We walk on different paths, intertwined, moving forward and growing together. Maybe the end is predestined, but... It is not today. Since things are going too well, let's speed up the countdown. Human life is short, just like fireflies to a flame. So if you have an answer in your heart, always remember, don't leave with any regrets. We have this right. about other people's safety. What? Why don't you go take a closer look? <laughs> Each came here with our own goals 
and realize them in unimaginable ways. What? Regardless if the result was a sweet illusion or a bitter reality. It was an answer we longed for day and night. So, why do people choose to slumber? I think it's as you said. Because in the end, we will wake up from our dreams. Oh, is this a fireworks show? Oh, one last shot of Acheron. She's still around. When I arrived, I happened to see a child holding it. He said the flowers were prepared by Aunt Jessie for the watchmaker and the war comrade he'd missed his whole life. I'm still reeling from what that crazy cutscene. I, I, that, to the tone of all of that was just, uh, I mean, I like the way it ended. We were holding hands and flying through the sky. And now we're here with Acheron. Was that just Hoyo versus trolling us? <laughs> Okay, now we're back to being somber. So, Akron did her duty. Mikhail would place two bunches of flowers here year after year. And after he left, it became three. Your wishes will always be remembered by someone. Now, Panacone, as you hoped, has welcomed the dawn after a long, dark night. The path forward may not be a bed of roses, but at least people are prepared to step forth towards freedom. I guess things are better, not being underneath the order. Tiernan, you can go home now. Tiernan, that's his name. Well, the Nameless are also preparing for the next stop of their voyage. Oh, hello, Acheron. Hey. But before leaving, we still have one last thing to do. Damn, the third answer seems like the right answer. We come to say goodbye to the old nameless. To say goodbye to you. Uh, actually, that's I would like to say goodbye to Acheron. To so say goodbye to Gallagher. I don't give a shit about Gallagher. I feel like I'm honored bound to pick the third option. I want to say goodbye to Acheron too, but let's say goodbye to the old nameless. And that has a lot to do with what Ac why Acheron is here. That seems like the right answer. A fitting end to the tale of the departed. One could not ask for a better farewell. Go on. They're all here. Ship of Fools. Honestly, when I heard the Conductor's request, I was pretty surprised. The Nameless. Those who trailblaze, doing good deeds but never seeking recognition. After all this time, how would we even find those three people in such a vast place like Penacony? But it seems, in the land of the dreams, anything is indeed possible. History may not remember the names of the dead, but the stars will attest to their journeys. The first glimmer of light in the prolonged night often illuminates little, as it is fleeting in the darkness too vast. But because of this, people will remember. As long as something shines in the night sky, then when the first star falls, countless more will follow. Streaking across the horizon a toast oh hey Brooklyn it's a drink Tiernan, Rosalina J and Estella we raise a toast to you trailblazers of the silver rail Aww. a toast to history that no longer remains silent the passionate and courageous pursuit and a voyage that traverses the stars Bid farewell to Gallagher. That statue. It wasn't here last time. 
Looks like this is the last riddle that Mr. Gallagher left for us. In the end, we still failed to figure out his true identity, or if he was even a living person. Uh, what should I say? I mean, this guy is definitely a history fictionologist, all right. I'm suddenly reminded of the time at the theme park when he said he was only 13 years old. Could that have meant something too? Either way, he's an enigmatic character for sure. At least our journey together in Panacone was real enough. And his loyalty and love for this land must have been real too, right? A toast! I'm sure you'll like this drink. Gallagher, we raise a toast to you, the slumbering hound. To the festival's invitation, to all lies and the singular truth. If we ever meet again, please don't talk in riddles. <laughs> yeah, seriously, you can apply that to the whole game. Say goodbye to Mika. Is the Astral Express ready to depart Penacone? Yeah. Maybe you should leave this place. I think this place is fine on its own. I don't think you have to keep watch. Uh, apologies, Mr. Mika, that we are only now bidding you farewell. Oh, that's all right. You've all done so much for the Watchmaker, and we are forever indebted. Allow me, as the representative of Dreamflux Reef, to make another toast to all the nameless. What will the people of Dreamflux Reef do now? Many will continue to live here. Those accustomed to being awake will mostly have a hard time getting used to a life of darkness with their eyes closed. Though the order has faded, there must be someone to watch over this primal memory zone. Really? <sighs> Penacone's nights are long, and there are many who are still far from a good night's sleep. As for the sweet dream over there, <laughs> we're still managing without it, aren't we? A toast. Mika and residents of Dreamflux Reef, we raise a toast to you, watchers of the long dream. To your tenacity throughout time, to each sorrowful night, and to the dawn that is finally upon us. Aw. That was so profound. <sighs> Alright. Bye, Mika. Last but not least, here he is. Maybe we should put him like on a bed or something. <laughs> In the end, we still came full circle. This trailblazing expedition started from the moment you and a bellboy ran into each other. After going on a journey of many twists and turns, they still ended up where they started. It's kind of crazy thinking about this story. And trying to conceptualize the all the events that took place. Just like a clock's hands that turn round and round, the start and end of each day will always land on 12 o'clock. The advent of time moving forward. There shouldn't be much left to say. This entire adventure started because of you, and should naturally end with you. And then, a new page will be turned. A toast. <laughs> Mikhail Char Legwork, we raise a toast to you, watchmaker of the land of the dreams, nameless of the Astral Express, to Penacone's past, present, future, and the child's unwavering dream unto death. With that, our duty as nameless should be complete, right? The trailblaze can illuminate the way, but... Ultimately, the future of a world belongs to those who live in it. Well said. We can't deal with all their shit. They gotta, they gotta carry on on their own. Uh. <laughs> March is like, that's not good enough. I still feel that Mr. McHale must have really wanted to witness this day himself. Well, what matters is that it happened. What's on your mind, March? Just a strange feeling. I had it a few stops ago, but it's super strong this time. Why not talk about it? Maybe everyone's thinking the same thing. 
Wow, this is such a lengthy and detailed epilogue. I can't help but think that whether it's Mr. Mikhail, Mr. Tiernan, or Madame Rosalina, their lives must have been long, and they must have experienced plenty of stories. They were also young once, stumbling and bumbling around just like us, getting into scraps and mischief, that sort of stuff. Companions, enemies, journeys, adventures, all the sad and happy memories. The every day that we're used to, they've lived through them too. But those things are all in the past. Time will wash everything away, so treasure the present. One day our stories will also be a part of the past. You're awfully sentimental today. I would say one day our stories will also be a part of the past. Yeah. Maybe that's the precise thing I can't let go of. It'll be easier to understand if I use an analogy. Okay. Like, when you're reading a book... If one of its characters keeps running into obstacles and experiences an ending full of regrets, we're bound to feel a bit mixed about it, right? I could understand, but I'd feel mixed too. <laughs> because we've seen every nook and cranny of their lives, we see these people as special. So... Even if there are parts of it that aren't really realistic, nor logical, we still hope that their story gets a good ending when it comes. But what if they... and we... aren't really that special? Oh. Mar March sounds like she's going through a crisis. Exist existential crisis. sat in this chair, waiting for the Astral Express to arrive every day. What was he thinking? And if, at the end of his life, he could still firmly say he had no regrets... Then, what is this regret we feel in our hearts right now? Hmm... I think each and every one of us is searching for the answer to this very question. The universe is vast. And our lives are but specks. The trailblaze never ends. But against the backdrop of the cosmos, the average person's lifelong journey is merely a short stretch. Ah. <sighs> when you put it that way. But it is in this minuscule distance that paths cross and countless worlds connect. The universe may not remember every person who leaves a tie along the silver rail. But we will. As long as we remember, their stories will never end. The trailblaze. And what Mr. McHale has left for us is his answer to this very question. It may not be perfect, but it left a smile on this storied, jaded old Nameless's face at the end of his life. Oh. And its meaning will be interpreted by those who come after us. It's not the answer that's important, but what we can learn from others' answers, right? If that's how you want to put it so that you can understand, March. Yeah. This is what trailblazing is. Uh, sure. Oh, March. Uh, I'm really sorry for bringing down the vibe. Quick, Don Hung, tell us a dad joke to lighten the mood. Why would you go to Don Hung for dad jokes? <laughs> it's never a bad thing to reflect. One day, we'll all have to face our own farewells. <laughs> but before that, we still have a long way ahead of us together. So the most important thing right now is to tell the conductor what we saw in Penacony. Then prepare ourselves for our next trailblazing destination. Yeah, this seems like a... Such a big conclusion. Are they going to do this every time we go to a new planet? I should get back to the Express. 
Or maybe I could say my final goodbye to Acheron. They, they leave it as optional to say goodbye to Acheron. Who in their right mind would bypass that? Will I get to say bye to Firefly? I held hands with her, but where, where, where is she? We just sort of just time skipped all the way here. Acheron. I'm glad we get to say bye to her at least once. I thought, I thought for sure at the end of 2.2, she literally said, this is our final, this is our farewell before she slashed the dreamscape. It's surprising to see her here. Kinda nice. But this might actually be the farewell. Do you still remember when we first arrived in Panacone? Who would have thought our paths would cross in such a way? Right. Will we meet again? The ocean of stars is vast. And given our destinations, I'm afraid our paths may not cross again. You never know. Some shit might go down and we might need you. Don't say that, Acheron. But the trailblazing expedition ahead is always full of unknowns. And my blade is sharp enough to sever fate. As long as we maintain our original resolve, I believe there will come a day where we will meet again. I believe that. Have we ever met before? Ah. In that case, I must apologize for my rudeness. Do you remember when we first met? I once said you reminded me of an acquaintance. Because of the self-annihilator's curse, my memories are stripped away, blurring my past. And after our journey together, what I originally thought were familiar feelings were merely illusions. I believe this was truly our first meeting. Oh man, these are two good answers! What if... That wasn't an illusion. With this our, as our first meeting, we can con consider our next meeting to be a reunion. That's right. What matters more is not who I am, but what we have done together. This story will forever be etched in my heart. Oh. Who are who exactly are you? Come to think of it, I didn't even get a chance to formally introduce myself. Simply put, I'm a self-annihilator who was cursed by the Nihility. My hometown was destroyed a long oh, time ago. backstory! And the whole world was erased beneath their shadow. In order to fight against the cruel end of self-destruction, I went on a journey in search of a way to sever the chains of the Nihility. After a long and grueling search, I am convinced that my destination lies within the depths of the dark web, where reality and the nihility are separate. In there lurks a secret called Device 9. One day, I'll reach it. Ooh, Device 9. That's a weird name, too. Makes it sound like it's technological. Have you ever met before? Uh, I want to see this. Oh, I get to answer it. What if that wasn't an illusion? What do you mean? It's improbable that you've crossed paths with my past self. What I mean is, there is nothing left to retrace there. Only nihility. I think I might have seen someone like you. I see. You've also had a similar experience? Is this breaking the fourth wall? Then you should know that this me and your memory of me are not the same person. <gasps> Secret answer? Wait, that is, it kinda, that's kind of creepy. But some things will never change. <laughs> is this a response to everyone uh, calling out or her character appearing in both in the other games in Honkai Impact 3rd and and Genshin Impact. Long ago, I too was like you, with irreplaceable companions. We also embarked on journeys, making the best choices we could whenever we could. Unfortunately, we didn't achieve the outcome we wanted. But moments like this make me feel like they never even left. She said her real name and it's a reference to a character that exists in Genshin Impact and Honkai Impact 3rd. 
In this universe, there exist countless worlds that are similar yet different, and countless people who are alike yet distinct. This is totally breaking the fourth wall. I too have wandered alone, encountering acquaintances on strange worlds, seeing their silhouettes overlap with my past. Ooh. In your opinion, what does this deja vu mean? Perhaps some sort of sentimental attachment, the wish to return to the past, a longing for a certain someone. I think I wish to return to the past. Attachment, desire, longing. They may all be right, but they are all incomplete. I believe it's not something external, but something that originates within us. An emotion that traverses time from a certain moment of our past to reach us. Perhaps it's a source of warmth and happiness. Or maybe it brings pain and sorrow. Each time we reminisce on our past, we always seem to notice a tiny but unforgettable instant that we left behind us. Along with certain other things that remain constant throughout. A damn it, Kara. That is a summary of our lives. Encapsulating everything about us in these moments. Proof of our shared path. Within them, we glimpse our own essence. And thus, we truly exist. God damn. Hey, you know what? She just finished her mission with uh, Tyrion. Why don't she just join us on the Astral Express? Come on, Acheron. Just like everyone in this story, hurtling onwards along the path of destiny with passion and courage for the things that breathe meaning into their lives. Set forth on your voyage without hesitation, Nameless, on the path of the Trailblaze. Even if the ending has been predetermined, that's fine. There are countless things that humans cannot change. Acheron is literally talking directly to me right now. But before that, on the road towards the end, there are still many things that we can do. I don't know how she does it. Allegra Kark is like slays at every role that she plays. And I'm so glad that she voices Acheron. And because of this, the end will thus reveal a completely different meaning. This is the meaning of journey. All those things, beautiful before, are still so now. And I believe it will still bloom at the end of the nihility. Until we meet again beneath the sun's rays. Oh my god. This is so good. What a way to cap off Acheron's journey in this game. You know what? In the dream, the the fake dream, where it was like the fake ending when we were back on the Astral Express, Pom Pom was was shockingly cavalier about hearing about the nameless dying. So nice. this is a real Pom Pom reacting to it. <laughs> That makes so much more sense. Pom pom pom. There, there. Chin up, pom pom. Don't be sad. Don't cry. Wow. Your method of consolation is truly unsophisticated. <laughs> Damn, Don Hung. <laughs> when to kick her down? When to kick her when she's down? <laughs> Still better than just standing there like a scarecrow. Oh wait, she clapped back. It's March picking. It's March picking on Pom Pom again. How could you say that? Don't be so mean. And while you're here, why don't you help me comfort Pom Pom? We told Pom Pom all about our adventure, and they suddenly started crying. I've never seen Pom Pom so sad before. <laughs> Conductor never cries. Oh, Pom Pom. Pom Pom is never sad. 
I see that cloud above you many times, though. Hop Hop is just... just... just angry! Yeah, angry! No matter where the express stops, you lot always manage to cause chaos! My well-thought-out timetable completely ignored! If you carry on like this, the express is gonna run out of fuel! That's right! Pop Pop is just angry! It's not because of Misha, Tiernan, and Rosalina and the rest! No, oh, he's more. Pop Pop's mourning the fallen. <laughs> okay. It's okay. Oh, Pom Pom, just let it all out. Everyone? Could you all take a break in the next car? Don't worry. I'll stay here with Pom Pom. But... Let's go, March. Yeah, March, you're not helping. I never expected Pom Pom would be so distraught. March, why wouldn't he, Why wouldn't Pom Pom be distraught? He just found out that old trailblazers passed away. Some of which passed away in a very sad way. <laughs> Those three nameless must have meant a lot to Pom Pom. Freaking March. No one knows exactly when Pom Pom boarded the Express, but one can surmise that their journey has been filled with many hellos and goodbyes. Probably more than we can imagine. My theory is that Pom Pom is the Express. And Pom Pom is like a Akavili's reincarnation or something like that. The fact that they're crying so hard is probably a good sign. It proves that Pom Pom's emotions haven't become <clears throat> dulled by the grind of time. They still deeply cherish every nameless who has boarded the Express and value every journey shared with them. Leave it to Himako. When it comes to comforting, there's no one better on the Express. True. I would like Himiko to comfort me too for not being able to spend more time with Firefly. Pom Pom said we might run out of fuel. <laughs> okay, that's my takeaway. <laughs> well, they were a little emotional at the time, but I'm afraid that's not out of the question. <laughs> Nothing is infinite, I guess. Since you joined us, the Express has stayed longer than anticipated at every stop along the way. And to ensure that everyone always makes it back on board, Pom Pom has had no choice but to delay the warp jump schedule. Ah, boo-hoo. Meanwhile, we're having great adventures. I see. <laughs> no wonder I can regularly hear Pom Pom pacing anxiously up and down the corridor. Turns out Pom Pom's been silently putting in a lot of work for us. Wow. What work? <laughs> Delaying our journey forward, that's work? Different from typical vehicles, the Astral Express converts every trailblaze into the energy it needs to run. Ideally, as long as trailblazing expeditions continue without interruption, the Express will receive a constant flow of energy, much like a perpetual motion machine. Okay, that explains a lot. <laughs> But if the trailblaze, even if we have an extended period of time, when we come back to the ship, doesn't that mean that we're going to be delivering tons of energy because of how meaningful the journey was? But because of our previous encounters, fuel is being used up much faster than expected. We can probably only pull off two more warp jumps at most. Only two more? Isn't that super risky? Oh, I don't want to become an ice cube floating around in space again. <laughs> okay, Mar at least you'll be an adorable ice cube. Falling leaves must return to their roots. I'll compliment her. When you put it like that, it doesn't actually sound too bad. Yeah, it's very easy to console, March. But I don't even want to become an adorable ice cube floating around in space again. <laughs> Which also means that we must prudently consider our next destination. I want to hang out with Firefly! Yes, <laughs> uh, I've already checked the astral charts. The two nearest worlds to us are the Oceanic... Oh, and now we have two choices! Shaka ...and the Agate World, Melustanen. If we go to the Oceanic Planet, will we? is it like the beach episode? As for which one we're headed to, 
that still requires a vote. Or perhaps you might consider a suggestion. <gasps> Black Swan! Last call! Everyone, we meet again. Ah, she's always there, actually. She has a mole on her back. Uh, it's you! Why were you just in my room? <laughs> Gosh, she's so hot. Everyone's so hot in this game. What the hell? Hmm. It's a very cute room, Miss March. Just like you. <laughs> Look at her. I knew we were missing someone. Memo Keeper, let's put aside how you managed to sneak past everyone and board the Express for now. You <laughs> well, mentioned a suggestion. She's, she's going to mention a completely different option. I accidentally overheard how the Express obtains fuel. Oh? Did we give away our secrets? Or blackmail us? If you tell... If you don't listen to what I have to say, we're going to... I'm going to tell everyone your secrets. I just wanted to chat with everyone to see if we could work together. But now, it appears my suggestion could be the very lifeline that saves everyone. Do tell. Please speak candidly. Depending on what you say, we could very well ask you to disembark. <laughs> Don Hunk! <laughs> Damn, dude. He, he ain't about her bullshit. <laughs> That's... That's, a, that's actually pretty hilarious. <laughs> yeah. All right, spit it out or else we're gonna ask you to get off. Ah, oh, the Permanence's descendant. What a charming little dragon, especially with those mired memories of yours. Okay. And you wonder why no one likes Black Swan. Black Swan, you, you kind of, you wonder why no one like is nice to you. But I digress. If the Astral Express is in urgent need of a special trailblazing expedition to recharge its engine, have you all considered this? Perhaps your destination could be a world that even the renowned Aki Vili never reached. Should you be able to lay down a new stretch of silver rail, the Express may never have to worry about energy ever again. Damn. Breaking the... Turning into the new frontier. Trailblazing to a world that even Aki Vili has never been to? Is that possible? Continue, Memo Keeper. This destination of which you speak, what sort of world is it? A world that many across the universe don't even know exists. Genshin's world. A world hidden away from outside observation. Its presence only revealed by the light from the mirror of the Garden of Recollection. A world fettered by three paths. Its destiny hanging in the balance. Sounds like a place we shouldn't go to. The Eternal Land. Amphorius. I'm intrigued, actually. Dot, dot, dot. I hope I'm not too late, child. <sighs> I wasn't expecting it to be you. Oh, he got cut! Look, he's chained down. He can't even just be in a cell. Look at these chains, too. They look like they're powerful chains hold shackling down. Don't you know how many sentry posts the family has built? And how hard it is to get you out of here. She wants to get him out? <laughs> Looks like my time's up. What do you mean? What time? Negotiation, interrogation, or death. My fate lies entirely in your hands, Lady Bonajade. Oh, he knows who this is. The dance is done. Why bother with the compassionate pretense and give someone who's about to die the chance to talk? Despite your fall from grace, you still look well. I'm very glad to see that you're so full of verve. <laughs> Do not insult my pride with half-veiled sarcasm. 
Have you specially come to see me, just to sate your vile vanity? Oh, of course not. I merely came to fulfill your younger sister's wishes, to offer you a generous trade. That is, if you're willing to accept. Did Robin sacrifice something to Jade? That's not good. Robin? To build a true haven where everyone can attain peace. That's the oath between you siblings, isn't it? If I told you there was still a chance to realize this vow, would you be willing to talk to me then? <laughs> oh, it's gotten to him. <laughs> I recognize the gravity of this question, which is why you don't have to answer me right now. Go now. You are free, O oh chosen one, who dared to exceed his bounds. Sever your wings, descend to the mortal realm, and walk their lands. See what this world is truly like. I will not accept your charity. As I mentioned earlier, it's a trade, and you don't have to give me an answer right now. Rewards are not reaped in a day, and if there's one thing I'm best at, it's waiting. The sweet dream still continues, and the night is still long. You have plenty of time to contemplate your answer. Ah, a word of advice for you before we part ways. A word of warning from someone who's been in your shoes before. Life is too short to miss out on golden opportunities. Stranger in a strange land. Stay tuned to see what happens next. Damn, already done? Oh! Alright, Boot Hill has become a visitor. Hey! Robin gets to come to- Firefly. Firefly. Sparkle! Firefly. If it doesn't show Firefly, I'm gonna- I'm gonna- I'm gonna scream. Okay, I'll accept Black Swan. Wow, they're releasing them all out all at once. Firefly. Chanty. They're gonna put Firefly at the very end, aren't they? You son of a bitch, Oilverse! You didn't put Firefly on the ship. I hate this. What an ending. That was a very drawn out uh, epilogue. Wait, do we still have that ship? That's our ship. So Firefly is okay. But do we get to see her again? I uh, don't don't let this be a story thread that just halts and then we just move on to the next thing. I'll be furious. Thank you once again for everything you've done for Panacone. Former ex surveyor of the Astral Express, Rosalina, Jane, Stella. Hereby salute you. May your trailblazing journey never end. Hats off to you too, Nameless. A girl's long dream has reached its end. No one can respond here anymore. This book was from Rosalina? This whole time? That's crazy. Message doll. Cool. Initiated temporary conversation. Cool. That feels so cool, don't you think? Cool. <laughs> Fireworks, cool. Yeah, you're getting the hang of it, aren't you? So, are you curious about why Miss Sparkle is doing all this? Do tell. Explain, <laughs> I, I guess. You remember the pro prophe prophecy three deaths? What's that got to do with you? Who knows? All I can say is that someone paid a hefty sum to hire Miss Sparkle as a as the director of Pentacony. Seems like it's a friend she made while gaming. My client told Miss Sparkle to make sure the three deaths happen in the safest way possible. In return, they shared their script with Miss Sparkle. What happened next? Well, a smart cookie like you can surely guess, gray hair. However, Miss Sparkle isn't some control freak. She let the actors decide how the story would unfold for themselves. Sparkle question, did you press the mutually assured destruction button that Miss Sparkle gave you? I couldn't do it at all. I didn't even have, I didn't even get the button. Oh really? Well, good luck score, scoring a ticket next time then. 
No worries, since more than half of the actors pressed the button, the third death went exactly as planned. She soared up in the sky and set off the most epic fireworks Panacone has ever seen, giving grand finale to this beautiful dream. She herself was safe and sound, happy as ending ever, so congrats, Grey Hair. After all, you're the one who made the call to that and actually saved that Firefly girl. That means Miss Sparkle will get paid as promised. Oh, by the way, to celebrate the successful grand finale, Miss Sparkle has decided to share another secret with you, Grey Hair. More juicy gossip? Tell me more. Wow. This explains a lot. You know what? Actually, Dr. Primitive is a huge fan of bananas. Go on. Oh, I got another text message. Someone here have something important to announce. I confess. Alright, I'll spill it. It is I who borrowed borrowed away Don Hung's neck massager. So it was you. By the way, borrowing is when you let someone know. If you don't, it's called stealing. Just a massager. If Dozer wants one, we can order one. I checked the price as well. Well, let's leave the bill with Dozer. Hey! Okay, fine. I'll, I'll, I can pay for a massager in-game. I am the business. The thing I wanted to tell everyone is that the Astral Express will soon be one of the shareholders of, Pan of the Panacone conglomerate. Conglomerate. The family and the IPC will begin formal negotiations soon regarding the Dreamscape's reconstruction plans and commercial projects for the future. After this round of investments, the IPC will hold 30% of the shares, and the Strategic Investment Department managed to secure a significant boon for us. When the financing is done, the IPC will transfer 5% of the stocks to the Astral Express to express their sincerity in developing a long-term partnership with the Nameless. Whoa! Though I don't know much about shares or options, sounds pretty great! I'm more curious about how future dividends will be calculated. Uh, I'm gonna I'm ask for more. Only 5%?! It is 5% of a freaking planet. That's that's a pretty big deal. Clearly your financial acumen is, is on par with March 7th. Hey! Don Hung. As, this, as the ceaselessly trailblazing nameless, we got another responsibility to shoulder regard, regarding this agreement. As shareholders of the Pentagon conglomerate, we must bear the duty of being brand ambassadors and ensure the planet of festivities will no longer depart from the proper path of harmony. So it's kind of like us trailblazers who are on the path of trailblaze have inherited a new path. Time to wield my shareholding power. Panacone, your boy boss is here. I'll say the top one. I don't, don't want to say boy boss. It's time to make everyone submit. Wait, no. It's time for everyone to remember our name. That's... Totally different from what I said. Boo, be a boy boss. <laughs> Seems like Dozer is full of energy. Huh? Hey, what are you doing? Let him be, March. I can tell his determination from the words he typed. We can't stop him. Checking out. Head to the lobby of the hotel in reality and announce your authority. What? All right. How I feel about this? I'm pretty vocal. I'm a. I I like Firefly. I like the role that she plays in the story. A part of me is like, man, I hope that like I don't know, she just becomes more relevant. Maybe a, a, becomes a more of a reoccurring character. We see uh, the other Celeron hunters uh, pop in like all the time, but like I'm hoping that Firefly kind of receives that treatment too. Like I kind of just want her to be around. She doesn't have to be a main character. She doesn't have to be a part of the Astral Express. But I hope that this isn't the last time we see her. You know what I mean? The nice. whole three deaths thing. To kind of see how it turned out is kind of a letdown. It was ominous to see like, oh, I gotta die three times. But then the last one felt like a joke. Then it was just a, a little haha -ha funny, right? <laughs> that last part on the ship, I didn't know like how to take that. It was so tonally dis- like the dissonance in the tone. Oh, turns out, oh, it was just a prank. Ha ha ha. And then you end with that cutscene where you're locked hands with Firefly. But then, of course, you just cut straight to the, the last part, which I felt was like, what? wait, where did me and Firefly land? <laughs> I think this game chooses to hold and, and fluff out and make such wordy dialogue in such in such weird parts of the story and then they freaking speed run parts that like should be held on and should be given like the proper attention and i think a lot of it might be determined by the fact that uh you know some scenes are might be too expensive or or be too much effort to put together 
Whereas, uh, you know, they can write dialogue for days, I guess. This could have been a really short and sweet epilogue. Meanwhile, I'll get an essay about Penacony business negotiations. I thought that the scene between the Santa Claus and Jade, that was pretty interesting. It didn't It didn't have to be that long, but I it did. But again, I thought it was leading to something that was going to be more of like a dispute. But it, no, they, they settled it. So I was like, okay, so are we done now? Is that all we're going to see of Jade? That's a, another thing I'm fearing. Like they're putting in characters that they don't properly pay off. Compare like some of the characters. Black Swan, Acheron, Aventurine. Those three had insane screen time and story relevance. I feel like we got a good amount out of those characters. Firefly, same thing. Is Jade going to be just the <laughs> one and done? So we own a ship now. What is this? <sighs> Am I satisfied with this patch? Uh, there was a lot of weird stuff that was put into it. I think ultimately it ended nicely. It ended, it ended on a really good term, tone. I think it was a nice farewell to Acheron. Black Swan still being relevant. I think it's kind of interesting. I think she might introduce something really neat to the, the team dynamic, wherever other planet we head to. I just want more Firefly. I think I set myself up to not be satisfied with this patch. Just shy of what it could have been like super fulfilling, you know? But I had to be real myself. I wasn't going to be satisfied with anything less than, I don't know, hugging Firefly and professing my love. <laughs> but that's that's not going to happen. There's too many other waifus. That's, that's not the kind of game this is. That's what fan art is for. But yeah, Penacony, what a ride. It has so much weirdness to it that it's refreshing. All right, chat, I could keep rambling, but I should probably wrap up. And I'll see you guys in the next one.